Good morning, folks. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. Wherever you are in the world, welcome to Tournament Tuesday. Uh, there is a mic in my face. This is my first time with a mic right in my face, staring at me. And um, I'm it, it, it's it's disconcerting me a little bit. We just won two packs in an iron tournament, so I'm pretty excited about that. That increased our pack load this morning by um, well by two. Uh, but we'll see what we do. Good morning, everybody. Zero silence. Welcome to the stream. Uh, Caprine Assassin, X Cookie, everybody, welcome to the stream this morning. We're going to do bronze open best of seven quick tournaments today. Uh, lots of data today. We'll get to it in just a minute. It's, um, it's interesting. Bronze has been, bronze has been fun. We're going to open some packs with the off teams. We're going to save the packs on the decimals until the end. Uh, because that is our main team and we're trying to build up uh, big tournament winning teams over there. So we're just going to, this is a PAX only team. We're going to spend our 4,000 points on PAX. We got some points over the week last week from Iron Bronze tournaments and stuff. I've been opening them as we go. Uh, I like you guys, but I need to build these teams up to where they're going to win. Uh, hopefully, uh, my co-host sounds great. Is there, do I have a co-host? Is there extra sound somewhere? <laughs> uh you haven't done tournaments yet, Tone Look. They're awesome. Tournaments are outstanding. Enigma, welcome to the stream. Uh, yeah, get your, get your notes ready because this is going to be, I think this is going to be a fun stream today. Uh, I think bronze by money. Um, I am in tonight's showdown. I am. I'm very excited uh, to finish putting the team together for that one. I think I made some progress over the weekend with the bronze team. And I really think that even in the best of seven open tournaments, bronze is the best bang for the buck. It's... Um, some of the cards are a little bit expensive right now. Uh, you're seeing anywhere from the two to four or five hundred range on these bronze cards right now, especially the live ones that are getting used a lot. Uh, but it's still the barrier to entry is pretty low. It's not like the silver where every silver card in the game is going for eight hundred plus, or most of them are somewhere around twelve hundred plus or more. Uh, especially again, the live ones are very expensive right now with people trying to finish up collections. So, uh, and six packs for one extra round. Uh, it's more games. It's a little bit less. Um, there's a silver Ray Culp. Nice start there to the packs today. Uh, so it's, it's a little bit less random than iron two. I think, I think those five game series can get really, really, really random, uh, in iron, especially with the iron cards that, always kind of perform however they feel like performing on that given day. I think the bronze cards start to perform a little bit more uh, consistently, and I think the consistency, once you get a good team together in bronze, is a little bit better too. So I know there's a lot of people that aren't real excited about this stream today because there's some people who uh, have been cleaning up in bronze. And while I'm not necessarily cleaning up in bronze, um, I'm not too excited for today's stream either because there's going to be, what do we got today, 400 people? <laughs> we got 300 people here who are going to see some pretty good stats today, I think. And uh, hopefully you guys enjoy the stream as we get to it. Uh, just a silver historical card on this one. Would have been nice to get that one on the Bruins, who are the Red Sox theme team. But unfortunately, he came out to the decimals too, which is just burning down irons and bronzes and some silvers right now. Uh, you paid 3k for Ozzy in 21. Yeah, I was packs only in 21, so I wasn't even really I was just collecting stats, not really trying to put a team together over there. Uh just the one silver. That's a rough start to the packs today, fellas and ladies. Uh so we got them in a couple. Let's throw them in another iron tournament just to see what happens. Uh iron data is coming very good. We've got a lot of bronze data. You guys are knocking out these bronze tournaments right now. I'm typing can you guys hear the keyboard? So the whole goal with the microphone in my face was for you guys not to have to listen to my keyboard while I um, while I did that. So you can see we're doing the weekly tournaments with this team just to try to get some data today. We're going to see about um, putting a real team together, probably on the Bruins or something as we go um, next week. So I'm glad to hear that the keyboard's working a little bit better. I haven't sold anything on this pack at all. I keep catching this this microphone out of the corner of my eye. I don't I don't love it. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. I don't love it. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. If you want to sub, feel free. But uh, I don't I don't require it by any means. I do stream just about every day of the week. 
Uh, and I just got my first pack of the day, so that's why we're waiting till the end. We're gonna have ten packs or so to open with the with the main decimals team at the end. The unicorns nineteen and twelve right now moved up to iron. Uh, had a little bit of a struggle last season. Let's see where they were. Eighty six and seventy six missed the playoffs, but still got promoted to iron. So good for them. This is a packs only team that just kind of trolls for data in random tournaments. Um, and so. We're just going to open three packs with them before we get into the stats. Then we'll go. I think this will be the only other team we open packs with for now. We're going to hit. We're going to head to the decimals after this and then uh, check out some stats as we go. Uh, there's a Brad Pennington, Adam Plutko, uh, Fute Ni, who's a card from last season as well. And then a Goldie Rap, 41 rated third baseman. I love seeing these iron cards that are super low. Uh, or these these position players that are like 40s and 41s. They're uh, I'm excited to get into some cap tournaments at some point. Thanks for the thanks, Zero. Um, I worked really hard to get the promotion to to iron this season for uh, this packs only team that I allowed the AI to put a team together on. There's our first goal of the day. It's Pete Alonso, and we'll finish it out with a Maurice Archdeacon. Whether or not we see him on the list today, I do not know. Uh, Martin Perez pitching today for the Red Sox after a big game for the Sox against the Rays yesterday. Hopefully they keep that going. It might be a day game. I might be missing the Red Sox game today to stream for you guys. So I hope you appreciate that. Uh, you were relegated back to a rookie, made too many changes. We got a Max Kepler here. So a silver and a gold on this team. We're going to let the AI see if um, the gold we just picked up fits on the team. Louis Aloma, the only... Uh, historical card in that pack. Let's go over to roster management actions. Ask AI to set up the team. Pete Alonzo makes the team. Congratulations, Pete Alonzo, for being our new first baseman. 99 power. Solid stuff there. The avoid K is a little bit concerning. Not too bad at this level. I think he'll still be uh, pretty competitive at this level. That is the unicorns. Let's get logged in to the decimals. We're going to ignore the Bruins for today. Uh, the Bruins are my team for tomorrow we'll talk about them tomorrow when we come back with um another day of our bronze daily cap uh tomorrow for the bruins we're already up to five packs we came in second place in a tournament this morning hooray uh and we've got a couple points to spend i don't know if i'm gonna spend my points on packs with this team today because i am trying to finish up the live collections i'm like 55 cards away from filling from finishing up the live collections right now so let's get into the data uh, sounds like you need to get a TV in my room so I can watch the game while streaming. Yeah, I could put it up on the other computer, but everything streams and my internet here is not great. So I try not to stream at the same time as streaming, if any of that makes any sense. Pete's been doing good for you and Rookie, good to hear. Uh, shout out to the Cubbies 3 and one start. Um, which Cubbies, the OHBL Cubbies or the real Cubbies? Because the OHBL Cubbies started out 3-1 and one and then did not do well in week number two of the OHBL. <laughs> Boston plays tonight. Good, I won't miss it. The Bruins play tonight too, so they'll be on both TVs. Uh, I can get more than three with the perfect draft. Yes, you can get four. So the perfect draft, sorry. Uh, so each account can get into four. Uh, so this is to the, tomorrow's perfect draft. Uh, daily perfect draft number one tomorrow some pretty good rewards in those perfect drafts they fill up really fast you kind of have to be on your game to get into it we've got a bronze tournament team going right now this tournament just started so it's probably still first round uh, i think we got swept or something this morning um after we got second place it's bronze has been weird i'll have the team go on like three runs with the second winner second and then Get swept in the first round. Looks like a solid start to this one, three and two. Uh, but I don't want to show you too many spoilers on that team just yet. We're going to go through data. Ready? Go Colorado Rally Cat. Go Kebby's real life ones. Uh, yeah, I've got them on my, uh, I got the Cubs on my follow, the Mariners on my follow now, and um, San Diego on my follow on my MLB app. And I'll tell you what, the MLB TV on my computer, when I can have four games up at the same time, that's, um, it's pretty spectacular. Not going to lie. Um, catchers are first. We're going to hit up catchers. So you'll one thing that you'll notice this morning is that, number one, I cover up your caught stealing rate. So let me fix that um, real quick. I didn't realize that I did that. And so we're going to make me just a little bit smaller for the purposes of this. And I need to fix that camera because I can see the top of my head, which is pretty annoying but i'll do that for the next stream there's a lot of changes going on in my studio right now and everything's a little bit of a work in progress you know i like to test things out while i stream which is very professional of me 
Uh, Austin Barnes comes in at number 10. He's the number two most used. Uh, you can see all top 10 of the catchers that are most used are live catchers right now. Um, one thing that you will notice on the catchers real quick is that I'm make I'm playing around with defensive ratings and defensive calculations. And you can see here, instead of catcher ERA now, I have a catcher value. And this is the only position I have this for right now. It's still very much a work in progress. But basically what I did was I looked at all of the ratings for the position and adjusted as necessary um, to get a number that makes sense. Uh, and so Barnes with his 59 arm, 80 ability, 77 catcher rating came out to a 6.3, which has him top 10 among all these 42 catchers that have qualified. So he's looking pretty solid and he's hitting pretty well too with a 299 weighted on base average. Uh, Austin Barnes looking pretty solid here. You're trying to build a team now. Uh, good luck building that team. Uh, there's usually a few builds based on what strategy you want. Yeah, so I saw some questions about strategy before I came live. I was sitting here kind of watching you guys chat. I might talk about strategy a little bit today if we have time at the end of the stream. Um, but uh, I don't always get a chance to do that because my days are pretty busy. And this stream takes a really long time. It's not like that noob DRC who takes like 45 minutes of your time when he comes on and then jets. Uh, my streams are like three and a half hours. I'm just kidding. You guys know how much I like DRC. He's my favorite streamer out there um, for out of the park too. So um, Barnes comes in at number 10, 299 weighted on base average. Uh, it is 350 minimum to qualify over the last, I went back to tournament number 900. We're at like 1600 and something right now. So I went about halfway back for my cutoff to try to get some of the, I think around tournament eight nine hundred was where some of the historical cards started showing up so that's why you're still seeing all live cards up here but you should see some historical cards starting to fill their way into the actual top tens defense is not used in the calculations today defense will hopefully be used in the calculations next week once i have those ratings worked out so don't forget to tell my roster the roster they're loved and important before submitting it is important pockets i agree oh drc is here welcome to the stream man uh good to see you thanks for dropping by and hello, Cabicom. Uh, long time, one of my longest, maybe my longest time viewer. Cabicom was there two years ago when I first opened a pack on stream, which was a lot of fun. Um, back in Out of the Park, perfect team. I don't know, was that 20? Uh, I think Cabicom's been around for a really long time. But Austin Barnes, 299 weighted on base average as we try to get going here a little bit. Oh, I forgot to do this. Here you go. Here's your meta for right now. Uh, I forget that every time. I don't know why I forget it every time. We are already up over 1.2 million plate appearances, guys, uh, in bronze tournaments. You guys are absolutely crushing these tournaments. They kick off every 10 minutes. It's ridiculous. 268 batting average, which is way higher than we saw last year. 331 on base percentage, 405 slugging. We got almost 14 home runs per 600 plate appearances. And the steals stay right around 10. There's some offense in bronze this year. Pitching stats, we got almost 300,000 innings pitch, 424 earned run average, 1.388 whip, seven and a half or so strikeouts per nine, almost 0.9 home runs per nine innings, which is uh, a good solid 0.2, two tenths of a home run higher than they were last year, and then 3.11 walks per nine uh, as well. Uh, as far as the meta all-time 63% right-handed pitching, left-handed pitching starting to creep in a little bit, at least on the starter side. On the relief pitching side, it looks like it's about 74%. I had some weird stuff this week where, uh, and then on the hitting side, you got 55% right-handed batters now and 53% all-time uh, with some switch hitters in there. I had a little bit of a hiccup the middle of last week where my pitching staff really, really started to be terrible. Uh, pitchers who I've seen be pretty good all of a sudden we're really bad, like like nine earned run average over multiple tournaments in a row. And so I thought we were going to see the batting meta shift pretty comfortably uh, over the last few days or so, but it hasn't shifted that much. And in fact, it shifted further right by about 1%. So um, I, I, I'm not really sure what happened. It might have just been might might have just been two days of me messing up messing up um, strategies or something like that. So we'll see. Elite defense is definitely gone, opening up. More. Yeah, I agree, uh, Steamrollers. We'll talk about some defense today. But you had two bronze quick tournaments start within four minutes. Yeah, it's crazy uh, right now. And then what did I miss up there? Pockets got a 22 diamond pack. You're welcome. Uh, and flag flying with pride. <laughs> uh, and let's see. 
why play anything other than bronze quick tournaments when rewards are the same for the more expensive buy-in? So there's more competition. Yeah, so like uh, Tencent Brain says, <laughs> Epic Divinity, there's a lot more competition here in bronze. And the other issue with bronze as opposed to like silver, gold, diamond, once you start hitting silver, uh, the cards are more expensive, but they're much more reliable than the ones at bronze. There is There is definitely a lot more randomness here at bronze and iron than there is once you get up to silver and higher i think um i do i still think that bronze is the best bang for your buck especially right now where they kick off every five minutes the silvers take a couple hours to fill at this point so they don't fill fast enough for it to be effective but once you can put a really good silver team together um whether it be by getting a, a big hit in packs and opening a whole bunch of packs or having the perfect points to buy a team and put it together um then i think the silver you, you can be more consistently performing in silver than in bronze where there's a lot of um where there's a lot of um irregularities and inconsistencies with the cards uh oh pockets hasn't opened yet well good luck on your pack we're gonna open them at the end i'm gonna try to keep track of the pack so i don't miss out on any packs today i missed out on some last time you've won packs in silver with an ai generated roster yeah zero yeah agreed zero chance that's gonna happen in bronze um but uh it, it is what it is so barnes comes in at number 10 number nine Jason Castro comes in at number nine. He has a 5.95 catcher value. The arm and the catcher rating are a little bit lower than Barnes. Um, and then let's see, as far as offensively, 306 weighted on base average for him. Almost 20 home runs per 600, which is good for fourth among these catchers. 308 on base percentage, 381 slugging over the course of the last 600 or so tournaments just 629 plate appearances so it's a little bit of a smaller sample size uh for castro but i uh, again the sample sizes are can be a little bit small on some of these guys they're going to go up as we go but right now i want to try to get some guys out there that aren't necessarily getting used as much uh and just just kind of to see how they look uh definitely splits versus righties if you can platoon him and have a versus left-handed catcher uh then that could be very useful you got three points of contact 14 points of gap 11 points of power 13 points of eye uh versus righties castro is going to be much much more effective versus right-handed pitching silver is soft right now um catcher ear i've been for catchers and turning i stopped i i'm my catcher ERA got messed up and I haven't gone back and fixed it yet. So I'm not 100% positive what it looks like. And I haven't looked at individual catchers in the tournaments fully. Uh, you've won three out of like 80. <laughs> you don't know what's good or bad uh, from your live cards only tourneys. Yeah, we'll see what um what the lists look like. I'm, I, I don't always look at too much of it. There is one player that I went out and bought this morning because I wanted to make sure we got him. Number eight is Yerman Mercedes. Is anybody watching this dude? <laughs> Eight for his first eight in his major league career. Unbelievable for performances for Mercedes on Friday and Saturday. Uh, the card doesn't quite stack up to that. We'll see how long he stays in bronze. Uh, but holy smokes, was Friday. I picked him up Friday night on my fantasy team just on the off chance that um, that he'd keep it up. So uh, big splits versus lefties. You've got, well, moderate splits versus lefties. Everything is just a little bit higher versus lefties. I don't think it's so bad versus righties that he's unplayable against righties. Defensively, he's a little bit worse. He rate, rates 30th defensively out of all of these guys. So um, 57 arm, 53 ability, 54 catcher rating. Does have a little bit of a first base and third base rating, but uh, dropped a 309 weighted on base average. 23 home runs per 600 plate appearances, which is slightly up from his all-time rate of just under 20. Uh, he does rank 35th all-time, so keep that in mind. But a 302 weighted on base average. We have 42 all-time qualifiers. So in order to qualify all-time, they need to have 600 plate appearances, which will definitely go up the next time we play. We do a bronze um, tournament. Uh, and in order to qualify for this week, which is what gets them on this list, is they had to have 350 plate appearances. So if I didn't say that already, I can't I can't remember. Yeah, if Mercedes keeps this up, he's going to be not bronze for much longer. So get your licks in while you can. Uh, catcher that is a DH. Yeah, uh, I, I think he's probably a DH, but you can use him to back up catch too. Um, especially, again, keep in mind, I'm not sure how well the AI is handling the DHs this year. I know last year there was some struggles with getting your starting designated hitter to go to the position he was supposed to be back up at. So um, that's one of those things that works a little bit better for the guys who manage their teams actively. Number seven is Tyler Stevenson, your eighth most used. Uh, 312 weighted on base average, which is up from his 303 all time. 18.42 home runs per 600 for him, just under 20. Sixth in OPS, seventh in slugging. Um, negative net steals, uh, just set him to not steal, guys. It's um, Some of these guys, you definitely need to do that. 
or you see the auction house listings for Mercedes are now on fire. <laughs> uh, you love Ali Sanchez is on the board. Yeah, so he's up here at number 10. I don't think we're going to see him on the list. Uh, his offense leaves a lot to be desired, but even at bronze, he's the highest rated defensive catcher. I'll just let you know that right now. Number six is Andrew Knapp. Uh, another live card. He's your seventh most used. Ninth in average, but number one in on-base percentage. Solid eye right there. It's kind of an empty on-base percentage for Knapp. He does have three, a 314 weighted on-base average, and he is top 10 in batting average among catchers, which is a 242. So it's a little bit less empty, but it's 100 points because of his walks. Uh, and he's a guy who doesn't really run. He's an okay base runner, but kind of is what it is. He's 24th catcher value among all of the catchers. Again, the defense is going to get worked back in eventually, but for now, uh, he is the sixth best offensive catcher here in bronze. Number five is Sam Huff, uh, your sixth most used uh, catcher. So at least we're seeing some guys that are on the list. I'd love to see some historical cards in here, though. 324 weighted on base average has him fourth. Uh, 0.38 net steals per 600. Uh, probably, um, there. So honestly, your mean isn't that much more expensive than most other viable bronzes. Yeah, there's a, so, and that's the thing is I haven't really seen one card in bronze yet. Uh, as we go through the list today, we might see some, but, um, I haven't really seen one that is like, you have to have this card or you're going to lose. Um, you know, it was like last year it became evident pretty quickly, uh, within about a month that, Roger Cedeno was that card early on and you don't I haven't really seen that yet um, this year in bronze so uh, we'll see there is one guy I'm going to talk about that I um, that I really like but um, maybe I won't talk about him because I really like him <laughs> Sam Huff comes in at number five though number one among catchers and home runs per 600 with 27.36 the defense is 16th uh, top half so um, again if you're willing to throw Ali Sanchez out there uh, who's the best defensive catcher everybody else um, kind of clusters in behind him. Yachty's pretty good defensively too. We're going to take a look at Yachty. He's not in the top 10, but we'll go back and look at him, uh, defensively as well, uh, and see what we can find for defensive catchers too. Uh, I think you're going to be surprised, uh, who I'm talking about. Cabert Ruiz at number four is your number four most used, uh, third in batting average, fifth in on base percentage, fourth in slugging, third in OPS, third in weighted on base average of 5.76 catcher value for him again that's a work in progress so take it with a grain of salt but what that means is he's kind of average catcher wise very good avoid case helps out his batting average not a very good eye uh so he's 12th out of 18 in walks 14 and almost 15 home runs per 600 uh so it's kind of you know you get into this little pick your poison uh thing here with some of these catchers where they're all kind of okay defensively they're all viable defensively there's not a guy there's not a guy on the list right now that i've seen so far who's like the um who was it um the, the anti boon <laughs> in out of the park 21 i've i've already thrown all of that stuff out of my mind it's so bad who is that catcher that just wasn't very good Sirhoff. um and not even Sirhoff. like pierzinski there's not like a pierzinski on this list uh yet that um is like just really good offensively and then just atrocious defensively as a catcher. Uh, Ruiz doesn't run at all, uh, but has some splits versus righties. It's about 10 points, anywhere between 3 and 10 points on his ratings. Uh, the 9 points in avoid K, plus 10 in power, plus 11 in contact. He is a switch hitter, but um, it's, he's a pretty splitty switch hitter too, so keep that in mind. And again, kind of okay. Uh, BJ was okay. Yeah, BJ was pretty good defensively. It was, uh, yeah, Harper was pretty bad. And then, um, yeah, these are plate appearances on the left. Um, here, so the lower number equates to more favorable to choose. So he would be preferable to Andrew Knapp. Let's see. So Huff at number five. Yeah. So depending on what you're looking for. So it's up to you to build your team, uh, it is, um, but yeah, they rank that's offensively. He ranks a little bit higher. You used Roger Bresnahan. Yeah, I agree. Bresnahan was a pretty cool backup back in, uh, 21. Kiebert Ruiz comes in at number four. I think we already talked about him, right? Yeah. Big splits versus righties number three jacob stallings comes in at number three uh he is the number three most used uh austin barnes was at number 10 who was number two he was there for defense stallings isn't terribly far behind barnes defensively barnes is pretty clearly the better defensive card but i think stallings has been pretty solid um throughout all of these tournaments he's up to nine thousand plate appearances now and ranks third all time 
ranked third this week in offense as well with a 327. And his numbers this week were right in line, basically right in line with his numbers all time. So I think this is probably pretty close to what you can expect out of Stallings going forward. A 280 or so batting average, which is spectacular among catchers. A 336 on base percentage, a 403 slugging percentage, 740 OPS, and a 327 weighted on base average. And Stallings looks pretty good there. Number one in war among catchers. Middle of the pack in walks and strikeouts. So um, getting it done with the bat. Um little bit of a split, but not a ton. It's kind of a weird split. He gets six points of contact versus lefties, but one point of gap versus righties, and then one point of power versus lefties, one point of I versus lefties, and two points of avoid K. He can play versus lefties or righties. Um, For now, he is the guy that I have in my lineup. I may change that out today depending on how things go. When you found out that Jacob Stallings is Kevin Stallings' son, I did not know that either. Uh, Koss Longhorn says... Um, they use Ali Sanchez. Ali Sanchez is a very good defensive catcher. We'll take a look at Ali Sanchez here in a little bit. Here we go. We get a historical card popping up on the list. Wilbert Robinson, Robinson comes in at number two. 1,600 plate appearances all time. Doesn't get him in the top 10. 477 plate appearances this over this period. Puts him at number two. Um, well, puts him just outside the top 10. But we're seeing a 319 weighted on base average from him. Um, steals. So this is kind of your guy that gets a, a little bit of steals. 40th in catcher value, though. Defensively, he's just not very good. So if you're just really looking to get some offense out of your catcher, then Robinson might be the way to go. He's got he's number four in batting average at 273, uh, but number nine in on base percentage. So it's a, a very singles and doubles driven um, batting average, a 426 slugging, fifth in weighted on base average, uh, but gets bonus points for being the only one of these guys who can actually run. And it's still under 20, so I'm not even sure if that's good enough for me to say, hey, this is a guy who gets on base at a pretty good clip and can run at catcher. Um, I'm trying to talk long enough for Excel to stop trying to crash on me. Um, and uh, But is that enough with him being pretty def- deficient defensively at catcher? Um, that's kind of up for you to decide on your team. Maybe as a pinch hitter slash backup catcher or something like that. Uh, but he's an interesting looking profile, uh, kind of, you know, it's a, it's a similar profile to some of the, the solid offensive catchers we saw last year too. So our number one catcher is one hit wonder, Bob Barton, uh, looking a little bit better defensively. Uh, he's 55, 68 arm and ability with a 64 catcher rating, but still puts him at 23rd in catcher value out of all of these catchers. But again, outside of the top two or three defensive catchers, um, you're keeping Allie in case you build a salary cap bronze team. Makes sense. Uh, the I rating scared you away from using Stallings. Um, I like Stallings. Um, counting stats are covered up by the pitching meta. Oh, gotcha. Okay, let's fix that. Um, and let's take this and maybe make it a little bit smaller. Makes it harder to see, but there. Uh, man, that's been going on for weeks. Nobody said that for weeks. I can't believe I missed that. Um, so there, now you guys can see the counting stats. <laughs> Get a professional in here. Uh, you got a bronze Steve Swisher in your drop pack. Congratulations. The number one catcher according to your data didn't even make the list. What do you got race pace? Let's see if we can find them. Uh, but again, Barton kind of smushes in with those middle guys, um, in the, um, defensively you're seeing him he's very similar to a stallings or a ruiz or a huff or a nap uh he's definitely not at that high level like the barnes or the ali sanchez or the molina um but offensively over 350 he made the cutoff by zero my cutoff was 350 plate appearances and he got 350 plate appearances and came in at number one uh so there you go bob barton 337 how much better is it than his all time we're looking at a 1400 plate appearance sample all time he's at a 328 weighted on base average 279 batting average 417 slugging 747 uh around number five offensively all time but defensively um again a little bit questionable but kind of mixed in there if you're looking for good combinations if you're just going for defense you're going to want to go uh barnes molina or sanchez probably at this point so al evans let's see if we can find him i don't know if i have data on him so let's reset the catchers and let's go backwards a little bit we've got davy grulon at number 11 we've got louis campusano who's a pretty solid rates uh eighth in catcher value uh comes in at number 12 so solid offense solid defense all-time ranks number 14 we've got there's al evans uh coming in at number 13 he's number 13 and weighted on base average according to my stuff but 
That's like 20 points off of his all-time. 573 plate appearances. It was a little bit of a struggle for him. Uh, everything's like 20 points below what he had before. Um, 2.38 home runs. I like the avoid Ks. I like the I like the the way he looks. Uh, I do like these ratings with, you know, that solid mediocre defense that we're seeing out of a lot of these guys. Um, and so we've got a little bit of a platoon versus lefties, 10 points of avoid Ks. Yeah, if you can get him in there with a guy who's going to hit versus righties and have him be your backup, uh, I don't think Al Evans is going to be terrible. I think he looks pretty good. And maybe over time these numbers come up just a little bit. Um, he could be one of the guys, one of the, the go-to offensive catchers. Um over the long haul. I think that the the contact is a little bit low versus righties since there's so many righties in these tournaments right now. But if the meta starts shifting towards lefties, I think he could become a pretty effective card uh, as well. Yeah, he comes in at number 14 offensively, but is number three in catcher value defensively. Uh, 72 arm, 78 ability, 86 catcher rating. Uh, Essien wasn't there. You had Evans on the start of your team, but moved to Molina. Uh, we'll see if we can find Williams. There's Williams at number 15. Uh, interesting card. I mean, 102 avoid K. The avoid K is phenomenal. He's number one among catchers in avoid strikeouts, but a 285 uh, weighted on base average um, and a 297 all time is pretty low. That's a pretty low weighted on base average, even among catchers. A 258 batting average is okay. The eye is pretty scary, but plays a whole bunch of positions. So if you want a guy who's going to be kind of mediocre at a whole bunch of positions for you as your backup, and then Find a really good platoon at second base, center fielder, shortstop. He's a guy who could be interesting there. He comes in at 15. Uh, let's see if we can find Ali Sanchez. Reese McGuire at 16 looks to be pretty good defensively. Fifth catcher value. Jorge Alfaro comes in at number two defensively and number 17, but number 36 all time and weighted on base average. Sorry, for 26th. Um... Uh, where you at? There's Ali Sanchez. Ali Sanchez comes in at number 18 out of 18 offensively. A 256 weighted on base average is really bad. 226 batting average, 268 on base percentage. He's number 41 out of 42 all time. Um, offensively, he is the number one defensive catcher. Um, it, it's um, how close is it? Let's see. Let's find Alfaro is like a, two tenths of a point ahead of him or behind him. And then you got. McGuire, who's at 6.66. I want to say Yachty was number three. So Yachty's a good half a point in catcher value behind Ali Sanchez. Uh, and again, uh, it is a little bit of a work in progress. So um, bear with me on the catcher, on the defensive ratings. It is something that I plan to get to uh, at some point this week. So uh, yeah, Ali Sanchez is pretty cool. But yeah, I don't think there's really a must have here. Can I check on Javi? Which Javi um, are, are we talking about? Uh, Woot Soup? Let's see. I like it. You guys can't even hear the mouse, can you? Uh, I don't have Javi. Javi Lopez did not qualify at 600. Um, shoot me a message on Discord, and I'll see if I can look him up and see what I have on him. Uh, it's going to be a pretty packed stream, so I'm not going to go too deep into the weeds looking for guys who didn't qualify. Um, today, uh, normally I would, but it's already going to be a pretty packed stream with these bronzes. So I'm going to, uh, just shoot me a message on discord and I will see what I can find for you. Moving on to first baseman. Oh, I like that one. Well, you know, that's the pre Red Sox, David Ortiz coming in at number 10. I didn't even know this card existed until right now. Uh, very, very solid numbers versus righties. Pretty abysmal defense. I'm going to go ahead and just get rid of that. I'm reworking that whole thing right now. So um, Ortiz comes in at number 10, 349 weighted on base average, really bad base runner um, and still outside the top 10 at home runs, but a 349 weighted on base average over 723 plate appearances, a 53 first base rating with a 28 error. I don't love it. I, it's um, all, all time. He's ranking 36th out of 55. So I'm not a big fan of this David Ortiz uh, all that much right now, which really hurts me to say. Uh, it is a, definitely a platoon is necessary for this card. And I mean, he looks kind of okay. I don't know if he's getting platooned right now and that may be dragging his numbers down a little bit or if he's not getting platooned right now, which may be dragging his numbers down a little bit. Maybe a designated hitter versus right-handed pitching. Um, perhaps it was in the Champions uh, releases this this past week, pre-steroids pre Ortiz. 
Uh, yeah, just like free steroids, A-Rod, right? Yanks Pride. Um, and we're, yeah, I want the David Arias card. Agree. Why can't you just bunt? <laughs> just bunt it to third base. There's nobody over there. Uh, number nine is Ryan Mountcastle. Live Ryan Mountcastle. He's the number third most used. Alec Bohm, the number one most used. We'll see where he falls on the list. Comes in at number eight and weighted on base average 20th and steals at 1.58. Uh, so you got a little bit. That's a little interesting to me. A decent base runner. Uh, splits versus lefties. You got nine points of contact, three points of gap, four points of power. So not huge splits, but a little bit of a split versus lefties. Decent, pretty good defense at first base. Um, I'll have ratings again for them next week. It, it's going to be right in here somewhere to figure that out. I don't know when I'm going to count, start counting them back in the ratings. Um, probably as soon as I get them done is when that defense will start counting in the ratings. I'm wanting something. I'm trying to get the numbers to fall somewhere between like zero and 12. Um, so that like a guy that's like super awesome at defense can still make up enough to be viable as a, as a candidate, at any particular position. Uh, but Mark Mountcastle comes in at number nine, 349 weighted on base average is pretty solid. 462 slugging. Uh, not a lot of home runs for him. 20th puts him at 17th among third baseman there or first baseman. We have 34 qualifiers. So some of them, um, is he rated here just when he played first base? Yeah. Uh, no. So the stats, these stats here are just when he played first base, but these stats here are all, all time, uh, plate appearances. So he's fifth as a first baseman, but it looks like maybe some designated hitter or even some third baseman or some left field, um, because we're seeing a gap of, uh, a, like 11,000, which is huge. That's a pretty big gap. Um, and so it looks like it's, uh, it's both. So the numbers down here are all time. Uh, and so we'll probably see him on the third base list as well. We may see him on the third base list as well. Uh, but these are the numbers just when he's listed as a first baseman. Number eight is Paven Smith, not even on the top 10 user list, but number five in weighted on base average this week. Uh, 12 home runs, so 30th in home runs among first basemen. Not a ton of power, but a pretty solid on base percentage for Paven Smith. Uh, fifth in OPS as well. Fourth in on base percentage, so some walks going on there. Uh, a little bit of power going on there. Not a ton, but uh, you know enough that I'm not going to discount him based off of it. Um, let's see, we'll claim another drop. Nice. Bronze Dave Island in a drop pack. You used your compile by card number tag. Um, catcher ability gives your pitchers a boost in home runs, less walks, and a lower ERA. You run 50,000 game simulation with 50 ability versus 90 ability. Team won 30% more games. Everything else was the same. Interesting, Mr. Devil Dog. Thank you for doing that, and thank you for passing that information on. Um, these are, they're, it's mostly like right now weighted on base average and steals. Uh, eventually defense is going to get worked back in, but the numbers were just because of the way defense or calculations are done in the game. And because of the way that exports are done, defense became a really big chore that in a lot of cases didn't make sense, especially at positions like right field and left field where a lot of those guys are playing multiple positions. And so I decided to cut it out of the rankings for now, but defense will get put back in here. Hopefully, hopefully next week uh, is when defense will get put back in. So this is straight up uh, weighted on base average steals. Um, and that's mostly, I think that's all that's in the calculations right now. And the reason I use weighted on base average is because um, I used to have my own calculation back when there were like four people watching me and it was it, it factored in doubles triples home runs um and all and all that stuff um uh, based off of the player steals and all that stuff and then i started looking into weighted on base average a, a little bit more and i was like hey that does what i'm doing it's just like an official statistic so uh it's it's weighted on base average times 10 plus some steals divided by 100 or something like that um I, I can get it to you offline, but um, it's that that's basically what we're what we're using. Uh, Obelix Prime. Uh, uh, there is a I think there is a slightly different engine between Perfect Team and regular out of the park. Just escaped a work Zoom meeting. Uh, yep, it's Bronze Today Rascal. Number seven at first base is Dan Vogelbach, uh, who's listed as a designated hitter, but has a first base rating. Um, will probably fall off the list due to his first base rating, however, because it's not. Very good. Uh, um, he's got a 246 average, which is 30th out of 34 qualifiers, but he's still fourth in weighted on base average. Lots of walks, 90 walks, fifth in on base average, on base percentage. He's got 120 points of on base percentage between his batting uh, above his batting average, over 1400 in 84 plate appearances. So if you want a guy who's going to walk and occasionally make contact with the ball and put it over the fence, 
Vogelbach might be the guy for you. 139 strikeouts per 600 plate appearances, however, um, hurts my soul just a little bit, and I don't love the defense. There are designated hitters in these bronze open tournaments, so he could be a guy that you want to use as a designated hitter. But I'm not positive. Um, I a little bit inconsistent for my liking. If he faces a high stuff pitcher with really good movement, it's going to be a bit of a struggle for him, I think. And so I'm not really in love with him as a designated hitter. Um, maybe more data will come in that changes my mind on that. But um, all time is weighted on base average is a 341. I I don't love this card um, based off of what I'm looking at right now. Um, he's not going to have many hits the avoid case plus contact is going to give him such a low batting average that as to be kind of non-effective as a designated hitter in my opinion uh you can play him at first base if you want well i don't really want to play him at first base either is the problem i don't i don't love this card uh i i don't i don't like it too much just 27 home runs yeah uh, and that's fifth among first basemen. So we'll see who's higher. Uh, rookie sensation Gerald Perry from the Atlanta Braves. Another pretty bad defensive first baseman, but we've got a little bit more going on with this card than we do with that Vogelbach, I think. Number one in on-base percentage among first basemen. Not a ton of power, uh, but he does have some speed, which even six puts him 10th. There's some speed at first base here in Perfect Team 22. Uh, I am going to be, part of what I'm going to be doing with the rework of the defensive stuff too is trying to narrow guys down to their number one position so that we don't see the same guys on a bunch of different lists. Again, that's something I'm working on for next week. I'm not real happy with the way um, defense has been calculating or um, being put in either. So I'm trying to figure out exactly what I want to do there, but it's still my brain doesn't function sometimes when I'm trying to put that stuff together. We do have a little bit of a split uh, in contact, gap, eye, and avoid Ks versus righties. Loses a little bit of power versus righties, but is definitely a better hitter versus righties. Uh, he's the first historical, well, second historical, I forgot about Poppy uh, on our list, but number one in, weighted, in on base percentage, number six and weighted on base average. You can honestly say you never considered playing Vogelbach in a bronze tourney, not even once. I don't think I would either. Um, some steals here, pretty good walks as well. So the walks for him, he's got 100 points of on-base percentage too, but it's not an empty on-base percentage like it is for Vogelbach, who's going to clog your base pads up. I think it's a it's a very useful on-base percentage because he can run. Um, and it's, he's a guy that you can put in the, you know, in the number two spot in your lineup who can hit a little bit for you. will get on base in front of the middle of your lineup. I know his slugging's a little bit low for a first baseman and his defense isn't great for a first baseman either, but, um, I definitely like the Perry cart more than I meant to get a piece of paper. I'm going to be right back. Sorry. I meant to get a piece of paper to write down guys that I'm interested in getting in the lineup. So I'm going to throw Perry in there uh, as a guy I'm interested in for now. He comes in at number six among first basemen. Uh, and yeah, I'm back. And as I get back, Excel decides it's not going to respond. So we'll keep talking. There we go. We're going to keep talking about Gerald Perry, but we changed our mind. Wilmer Flores comes in at number five, uh, 359 weighted on base average, puts him at third, but zero steals per 600, which is good. It's not a negative number. People are not having him steal. A 21 speed plus 33 steal is not great, but a 50 base running isn't too bad. We do have splits versus lefties, so if you can uh, platoon him, all the better. He does have a pretty good first base rating. Uh, I will be curious to see the next time we look at these where he ranks among first basemen. But that's a pretty solid defensive rating at first base with a 51 error and 81 first base rating and an okay 41 range. Uh, I kind of ignore the arm and the turn double play at, for first baseman too. That is a pretty big split. So we're looking at three points in contact, but 12 points in gap, 15 points in power, six points in I, and 13 points in avoid case. He is definitely a platoon option. Uh, I I don't think he's unplayable versus righties. He's just going to be much more effective versus lefties. Um, and so uh, at se he's got a second base rating. He's got a third base rating as well. I don't know that I'd play him at either of those. A 41 range is pretty terrifying to me at second base. And even at third base with a 27 rating and a 41 range, I don't love him at third base. So he's mostly a first baseman defensively to me. Um but number two in slugging, number eight in batting average, number three in weighted on base average among first basemen, uh, and 24.52 home runs per 600. No idea who's going to be ahead of him. Uh, if Yuli doesn't work out, you might have to go to Flores. Yeah, I, I like the way he looks right off 
um, right off the bat. You switch to Mount Castle versus lefties. Um, eventually, I'm going to have that player comparison thing um, working. <laughs> the um, it, it's I've been working so hard on the other st- on the daily and weekly stuff. If you guys stop by tomorrow, I'll have daily um, bronze cap stuff that I've been working on, and it's gonna. I'm working on a new thing for the daily and weekly tournaments uh, for my stream, and I enjoyed it yesterday. I hope the people who stopped by enjoyed it too. Number four is Nippy Jones. Uh, number four, Snapshot. This is a guy that we saw yesterday, uh, for those of you who were watching. He's definitely splits versus lefties as well. You got five points of contact, 16 points a gap, a little bit of power split towards righties, but almost 20 points of avoid K versus lefties for Nippy Jones. He's number two in weighted on base average uh, over this period with nine in 946 plate appearances, but all time he's at a 347. So uh, really solid performance this week, but I'm not sure whether he keeps it up or not. A 494 slugging, 19 to 20 home runs per 600 for him. Number one in batting average, number five all time in batting average, solid looking batting average for Nippy Jones. Um, the on-base percentage is a little bit low. That eye is pretty bad. You've been using Flores in a platoon. Uh, Boyer likes Nippy versus lefties. Uh, will my stream change your life? I doubt it. Um, but if, if it does, then I, I'm, I'll be very happy for you. Uh, your backup first baseman for Yuli and perfect team. Uh, yeah, I like this. Nip, Nippy's, a, Nippy's a little bit of a beast, especially against left-handed pitching. Um, again, you got 39 range, a 21 error with a 52 first base rating. Um, I I can live with it if you're really solid offensively and he looks to be pretty good. Again, it's um so it looks bad here like 19th looks bad, but it's a lot of guys with a smaller sample size too. There's probably a lot of guys right around that 600 to 1000 plate appearance mark here in bronze right now. And so uh those guys are in, probably inflated just a little bit. I think a 347 is a pretty solid weighted on base average. Uh especially since it's very batting average. It's it, it's a good batting average. Lots of singles. Not a lot of speed though. A little bit of a base clogger. Uh I wouldn't lead him off. Maybe bat him 5th or 6th. He's going to hit people around the bases for you. Uh is Nippy Jones. I think he looks like a solid number 5, number 6 hitter to me. Anyway, um Let's go. Let's throw him on the list. Uh, this is first base. Hopefully I'll be able to read my own handwriting. Um, he's versus lefty as well. So there's a lot of really lefty heavy splits here uh, at first base. Moving on, we got Jose Martinez at number three. 366 weighted on base average. Ranks number two all time. 372 Weighted on base average over almost a 4,000 plate appearance sample size. Just over 21 home runs per 600. Does have serious, serious splits versus lefties. Uh, and doesn't look great defensively either. So um, also he's a 60. Man, if this card dropped down to a 59, this would be an absolute iron monster of a card. Um, here's hoping that he makes some errors at first base and loses enough first base defense to drop down to a 59. Because this card would mash in iron if it was a 59 um, versus lefties uh 82 contact versus 58 for righty so you got 24 points you got 12 points in gap you got 16 points in power 11 points in i and eight points in avoid k's versus lefties you're going to want to platoon him uh again another one of those guys that i don't think is necessarily unplayable versus right-handed pitching but is definitely going to be more effective versus lefties. And first base is a position where um, it's a little bit easier to platoon guys because there's, um, you know, defensively there's, it, it kind of is what it is. But uh, 305 batting average all time is pretty solid. A 372 on base percentage all time is pretty solid. OPS of 847 is pretty solid here in bronze too. Uh, on the other side, when we look at the counting stats, they're not super high, right? It's um, just 21 home runs per 600. Um, the steals are whatever. He's a first baseman. Strikeouts and walks are right there in the top third. So even 24 is the top third among 55 qualifiers. So um, I think Martinez looks pretty good as a first baseman versus left-handed pitching. Uh, number two is Bob Unglob. Um, another guy who splits a little bit versus lefties, but not as much as some of the other guys we've seen. Pretty bad range. Okay, first base rating. Looks like a left fielder. He could work in left field. Defensively, we'll see um, how that looks in left field. I don't know if he stacks up. He's 15th in weighted on base average, though. The steals, his um, 53 steals per 600 are dri- are driving him up. Uh, Napers was looking for him. You can see why. Uh, defense doesn't update unless they change that. He was in the auction house a minute ago. It doesn't update. I did not know that, Bailey. Thank you. 
uh people use him for his name <laughs> yeah it's it's a heck of a name uh, um he's uh again we're looking at just four points one points anywhere between one and four points uh between versus lefties and versus righties uh he's a good base runner and he's got power too he's 28 home runs 29 home runs all time per 600 um with an okay on base percentage 24th out of 34 i mean mediocre on base percentage solid power good speed when he's on the bases with okay defense at first base um i you know again it's it's kind of i don't see a standout so far so i don't think he's unplayable and i think that he's a guy that if you're trying not to platoon at first base is going to give you almost the same output versus lefties as he will versus righties so um unglob comes in at number two <laughs> number one is first baseman chick gandal oh man this was my secret <laughs> Number seven in weighted on base average, 288 batting average for Gandil, 345 on base percentage, both right around the top 10 out of 34. Uh, all time, you're seeing a 285, 347. Again, both of those are right in the top third, just outside of the top 10, but out of 55 qualifiers. 16th in slugging. Slugging's not super high. It's not a ton of home runs, but he's got um, a pretty solid OPS anyway. Lots of singles, lots of doubles, some triples thrown in there for Chick Gandel and plays pretty good defense at first base. Again, defense will be here next week. Uh, Chick Gandel is uh, I, I, what makes it number one. So the combination of weighted on base average and the steals. So it, it's you see the Unglob is a lower weighted on base average, and but higher steals. Um, and Gandal is a pretty solid weighted on base average and number two in steals behind, uh, Unglob. Not a ton of power here. Again, uh, you're, you're missing power. Uh, but, uh, I, this is the one I'm running at first base and I'm pretty happy with him so far. Uh, number one in war among first basemen too. So, uh, at 3.45, uh, fourth in zone rating among first basemen, ninth, top 10 in fielding percentage. And again, those are out of 55 to go along with a top 10 weighted on base average and steals. I mean, this guy, it's its just a monster of a card right now. I love this card. You sold him for 400. Uh, you should have held on to him till today. <laughs> uh, Shock Julie wasn't in the top 10. Let's see. Let's go see if we can find him. Let's reset the first baseman. We've got Ty France at 11. We got Jesus Aguilar at 12. We want to see Yuli and we want to see Alec Bohm. Votto at 13. Buckner at 14. Uh, comes in at 14th and weighted on base average. Top 10 in steals. Doesn't strike out at all uh, is what we're seeing out of Buckner right now. Uh, 15 is G-Man Choi. Uh, first baseman for the Rays. There's Alec Bohm. Your number one most used comes in at number 16. Um, you know, uh, grades out 15th all time. 11th all time and weighted on base average at 350. Uh, 2.61, just over 20 home runs per 600 plate appearances. We'll see what happens as the home runs start evening out. 21 would have been huge last year, but I don't think 21 is a ton here. Uh, I think the reason you're seeing a lot of these guys up here is I think though we're going to see the historical creep starting pretty soon uh, as the historical cards start um, taking over Um taking over here in the game. Uh, yeah, Bohm looks a little bit low. I really like his ratings. Uh, it's probably a, a combination of the other guys being a much smaller sample size. Uh, I do think Bohm's ratings look pretty good, though, uh, as far as uh, his offensive ratings. And so I think that um, the 25, he's probably getting held back a little bit by the fact that he's got 25,000 total plate appearances as opposed to some of the other guys uh, closer to the top who are, um, closer to, you know, the, the 1500 to 3000 range, their numbers will probably drop over time as they normalize. Uh, they just haven't really had time to normalize. So next time we do bronze, it'll be a higher cutoff. So he'll probably be higher up on the list. And if we go through, if we, like, if we go back through and look at, let's say we change the cutoff to 2000, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So you're already, you've already moved him into the top 10 at that point among guys who are getting used a ton. So I do like, um, Alec Bowman. There's Guriel, uh, who comes in with a 337 weighted on base average, but a 462 slugging puts him at number three out of 55 first basemen, uh, in slugging. That's pretty solid. That's a really solid number for Yuli Guriel, uh, with a 462 slugging. And that's actually lower than his all time, which is 474. Um, which is seventh out of 55. So um, keep in mind, again, we had 34 qualifiers, so it's not like um, there are a lot of qualifying players right now because 
the the top players haven't necessarily shaken out and there's a lot of weird numbers going on near the top in some cases as well so i do like bowman i like guriel i like both of these cards i do like that chick gandal card though it's um it's I, I like it a lot and that number two card uh who was it uh unglob i don't think this is a terrible looking card either uh i i i like this card quite a bit too uh what's carl taylor at you see him number 10 for the week in usage let's see if we can find him um there he is went right past him number 18 uh carl taylor uh another solid looking card to me uh it's 77 contact versus lefties 51 gap 60 gap versus righties um usable versus lefties and righties okay defense the 28 error with a 52 range and some left field rating carl taylor um Pretty good. There's so keep in mind again. Keep in mind there are a lot of people on these lists um, this week, and um, as I phase out those early ones, like the the first, so the next time we come to this, probably those first thousand tournaments will just be totally phased out um, at that point as the um, the usage normalizes and we start seeing people kind of kind of fill into the the meta. So um, thirty four first baseman qualifying is a ton uh Unglob, right field versus left hand pitcher that's who that's what you're running bombers uh there really are a lot of good options at first base yeah i agree uh i think these uh, uh there's lots of options at a lot of different positions i think they've done a for, based off first glance i think they've done a good job of giving us a lot of um pick and choose so there's not a lot of guys here at bronze who are like the best uh like like i haven't seen too many guys who i would be like yes get him in in your lineup and um if you don't you're wrong so uh second baseman nick solak comes in at number 10 uh he is a second base third base left field rated card and center field but you know he that is what it is eighth and weighted on base average among second baseman 12.41 home runs per 600 uh puts him seventh among second baseman 27th in zone rating uh out of 48 we have 48 all-time qualifiers 22 qualifying in this period solak comes in at number 10 uh pretty solid green uh top to bottom here but nothing really stands out to me for solak as um, something that's going to really put him over the top. I do like that he plays second base, third base, and left field. I think there's some other. There's a lot of guys this year who uh, can be pretty solid utility players, and I think Solak is one of them. So uh, a little, he'll, he'll give you a little bit of power. Um, not a lot of speed, but he's a good base runner uh, and can give you that sack bunt or that bunt for a hit. He's uh, it's a he's an interesting player as a utility card. Uh, live cards definitely seem a lot more balanced to me. I agree, ten cent brain uh live gold austin adams in a drop pack congratulations pockets um who was yuli uh zero was yuli your best batter in the first 30 games uh it, interesting i think that's who you were talking about back then how many plate appearances is qualifying so right now for this week it's 350 for this week and 600 all time which i know is a super small sample size when we're talking about 1.3 million overall plate appearances. So um, I, I, I I totally get that that's a pretty small sample size. But again, the the really good cards aren't. I don't think we're seeing them too much yet. So I wanted to make sure that we got the the cards that we haven't necessarily seen too much uh, at this point too. So number nine at second base is Desi Relliford snapshot 2002. Solid speed stealing base running here. Uh, number two. For among second baseman and that category, not great defensively, a 72 range with a 60 turn double play and a 42 second base rating. But again, Relliford plays five positions, second base, third base, shortstop, left field, right field. He's listed as a shortstop. Uh, and so um, I think my goal is to have guys listed as only the position they're rated highest at and that's my goal going forward but it's taking some work for me to figure out how to make it happen um and as you can see with the tabs at the well you guys can't really see the tabs at the bottom i've got i swear i've got 90 tabs on this sheet and it gets overwhelming at times i'm considering taking out defensive statistics completely because that'll clear up three nine that'll clear up 30 tabs for me uh and, and so i'm considering just removing it completely but i don't know if i'm going to do that yet um rated highest at shortstop but would make a better left fielder agree i agree 100 on desi relliford 59 contact 51 gap 52 i 65 avoid k's only 831 plate appearances so small sample size alert but 4400 all time puts him 40th out of 48 
Uh, but again, sixth in steals, so he's definitely moving way up the chart because of those stolen bases uh, at this point. Uh, I don't think I like this card. I don't think I'd play it um, as a second baseman. I may consider it as a third baseman or a left fielder, depending on how numbers look over there. But I don't love the the on base percentage is good with his speed, but I don't love the batting average. I don't love it's a below average, below league average batting average. Um, and the slugging is way below league average. So it's all singles um, and a little bit of walks, um, which is useful because he can run, um, but also he can play five different positions. So if you're looking for a mediocre defensive backup um, to get that platoon in at first base and at catcher, where we've already seen there's some pretty solid platoon options there, uh, then maybe Relaford's a guy that might be interesting. Number eight, Tommy LaStella. MLB Live from the San Francisco Giants. Very good avoid Ks. Splits versus righties, which is helpful in this format. Uh, not very good defensively at second base. I don't think I play him there. A 48 rating with a 51 range. Uh, much more likely to play him at first base, but even there, I'm, I, I don't necessarily think that I love him there either. Um, and so, uh, especially because he's not giving you any power. Seventh among second basemen this week and weighted on base average uh 11th in home runs with just over 10 per 600 all time you see in a 332 weighted on base average which is uh just above league average 401 slugging which is right around league average so he's just kind of average and doesn't play great defense um and so listella he was your seventh most used this week but i'm not sure he's a guy that we'll see what the other second baseman look like number seven is jorge polanco Here's a pretty decent looking defensive second baseman. Again, there's no real standout defensive players here in bronze. Um, and I don't think there's too many guys who are so much better defensively, even at primary positions like Polanco, um, like, like second base and Polanco, that they're so much better than everybody else that you can just ignore their offense like you could with some guys last year. And so Polanco's highest rated position is second base, even though he's listed as a shortstop. Um, and he looks okay at second base, the 70 range with the 72nd base rating a 64 turn double plays. Um, will I be doing perfect draft data analysis in, in the future? <laughs> uh, uh, yes, I want to, I am downloading the data. Uh, it is, I don't know what to do with it yet, but I am downloading data on perfect draft and I'm just that it, it's like, you think a lot of people are getting used here in bronze. Uh, all 4,000 cards are getting used in perfect draft. Um, I'm not sure what to do with it yet. So I'll talk about that. I'll try to talk about that at the end, um, as opposed to messing up everything else here in the middle of this stream. Uh, Louis Urias comes in at number six. Uh, good second, second base rating with a 77, 73 range. Uh, solid error at 71. Looks pretty good defensively. Ninth most used this week at second base. Fifth and weighted on base average at 330. Uh, do I have any tips to make data collection not a... No, I don't. <laughs> Philly cross foxes, uh, or five cross foxes. I don't have any tips to make it not a slog. Um, it's uh, well, yeah. It's um, figure out what you want your sheet to be. Uh, get one sheet for everything, uh, and then you can do whatever you want with it. So my my data um looks. Oh, we want a standard pack. Oh, that was our Twitch drop. Never mind. We didn't win anything. Okay. Uh, we're still in this bronze, so I don't know how, how if you've been here in the past, um, but let me show you real quick what my data download dump looks like. Uh, if we go to statistics and sortable stats, uh, this is what my data dump looks like. It goes all the way across to like BW or something on my spreadsheet. It's like 75 columns or something, maybe even more worth of data that I then split up in the spreadsheet. The spreadsheets get really big, really fast, but I found, I know some people like Enigma. Um, the main team is the Dewey decimals. Um, I know that some people like Enigma, um, pull stuff separately. Uh, I think DRC pulls stuff separately. Um, I like to do it all in one because, well, I have three kids and, um, I don't have time to be doing three things for 60 tournaments a day or however many I get in, but, uh, that would be my recommendation for not making it a total slog is figure out what you need to do to get one set of downloads and then work the sheet from there um, and do what you need to do with it from there. Uh, it saves two clicks if you're doing defensive um, and really more than that. So it's one, two, because you got to adjust the filters, you got to adjust everything else. So you're talking like 
it's probably eight clicks per tournament, which if you do 60 tournaments, you're looking at what? 480 clicks a day, saving my fingers uh, and my wrist and everything else. Um, but then making it work in the spreadsheets <laughs> becomes a little bit of a slog too. Uh, Urias comes in at number six. I think if we add defense, he probably moves up slightly on this list too. He's a solid weighted on base average guy. A little bit of slugging, a little bit of power, 40s, mid 40s. A um, little bit of splits versus lefties, but not huge. Uh, you're talking four to seven points. Uh, rates 36th all time though. So it looks like it was probably just a really big week for him again. Uh, fifth out of 22 this week, 48th, uh, 36th out of 48 all time. I'm not sure what you can really expect out of, uh, Louis Urias. Uh, why pull the ratings every time they are static? I pull the ratings every time because, um, the people in the tournaments change a little bit. And so it, the way I, I don't use the, um, the out of the park thing. Uh, so the way that my spreadsheet, I pull the ratings because it goes into my own kind of thing. And because I just, uh, cause the, the people in the tournament change. And so I create my own database based off of the tournaments. Uh, you also hate yourself. You spend 30 minutes tracking 15 tournaments each day, 30 minutes. I'm jealous. <laughs> uh, but that's why, that's why the tournaments are in there. Uh, and I'm getting static in my hair off of the mic, which is hilarious. That probably looked great on stream. Uh, and yeah, and the ratings for um, live players change once a month. So then I have to go in. I have to adjust my ratings uh, collection now and collect from the bottom up because of the way that I download everything too. So uh, number five at second base, snapshot Tito Fuentes. Solid 100 error rating with a paltry 59 range and a 69 second base rating. So he won't make errors. Number two in fielding percentage, but a pretty horrible zone rating for him right now. But fourth and weighted on base average, uh, that avoid K is plus the 71 contact 50 gap in the 63-63 versus righties. Uh, he's going to be a solid singles machine. Good batting average is third among second basemen. Uh, 347 on base percentage is good for second this week. Uh, puts him fifth out of 22 all time. He ranks 35th um, all time. Uh, can't remember if I left defense. I think I might have left defense in for the all time rankings. Let's find out if I did or not. Go to second base and total. Oh, I can't see my stupid thing. Hold on just a second. Bear with me for just a moment while I figure out if I left defense in there for the all time rankings. I did not. So that is his all-time offensive rank. Let me fix that one more time. All right, that formula bar, and then we'll go back up to our batter presentation. So uh, all-time you're seeing, like, he had a pretty good week this week at a 330. He was, he's ninth most used all-time, which is interesting to me. A little bit of speed and steel, pretty good. I mean, the defense is... It is what it is. It's um, The range is a little bit low for me to want to use him as a second baseman. He's only a second base rated card as well. Um, and I don't think he blows everybody else away offensively, which is really what he'd have to do for me to want to use him at second base with that 59 range uh, in just a 53 turn double play. Um, I, I love the 100 error, um, but... He's one of those guys, if this was like a 65, he's a low silver instead of, uh, instead of a high bronze probably. So... Um, Useful bat, I think. He's he's an okay bat, but I think the defense drags him down just a little bit too much. He comes in at number five this week, though. Number four is Ram Ramon Urias from Baltimore, 2021 Live. Interesting looking ratings on him. We've got a little bit of a split versus lefties for him. The range is not great. 54 range, 53 at second base. Another negative zone rating guy. Um, pretty poor uh, overall defense. Offensively, you're seeing a 335 weighted on base average. I'm not surprised to see him rate pretty high. These are, um, for a second baseman, these are some pretty solid offensive ratings, but the defense is not my favorite right here for Urias. We'll see. Um, we'll go back through anybody who doesn't make, any of these guys who don't make the list and see what we can find on them this week. Uh, third in slugging, second this week, third in weighted on base average this week, fourth all time at a 343, which is a nuts weighted on base average for a mediocre defensive second baseman. Number three is Alexi Casilla. Um, I'm using this guy as my designated hitter right now. I'm embarrassed to say because uh, I haven't found a better one. We're going to find a designated hitter for the decimals today. 
Uh, I have not gone through the team uh, since last week outside of one person today. Uh, only three home runs for him. Yeah, you're using him as a designated hitter. He only hits three home runs. Well, he used to be pretty good the first week or so. Uh, he was putting up some crazy numbers. Obviously, I need to get this guy out of my lineup and see if I can make that bronze team just a little bit more consistent. Uh, I think this is probably... Um, my number one priority today is getting Alexi Castilla out of the lineup. However, uh, he runs and he um, uh, late two instances may have been addressed or lives dominating this list because they're good. I think it's a combination, um, but availability is definitely an issue for the live cards, Dogberry. Um, you use Bowman DH. I like that idea. That's a good one, too. Uh, I've gone down all the way into 600 plate appearances to offset the live effect. Yeah, I've I've tried. It's um there's still not a ton of historical stuff available just yet. Uh, and so Cassia, um, this list is definitely because of availability. I'm, I tried to get rid of some of the live stuff. It hasn't worked particularly well. So go buy some historical cards that you think look good, and then join some tournaments with me. Um, 14th and weighted on base average, but number one in steals. He's a monster base stealer, probably one of the five or six best here at this level who plays okay defense at second base. You know, the error is terrifying. Um, the range is okay. The second base rating is okay. He plays some shortstop too. So you're seeing, uh, the zone rating is hurting him a lot because of shortstop and stuff like that. And that's why I, I just don't love defensive metrics that I've come up with. So, uh, I'm working on making it better. Um, but Cassie is going to hit some doubles. He's going to get on base for you at an okay rate. And he's a, uh, he's a terror on the base pads too. Um, but he's getting taken out of my lineup, and I don't love him here at number three among second basemen. Number two is Louis Arias. Just at number two, uh, he's the guy that you guys really like. Uh, he's a masher versus right-handed pitching. 308 batting average, 367 on base percentage, number two in weighted on base average at 338. Uh, pretty good base runner, even though he's slow. Uh, number two in strikeouts, number seven in walks over his 15,000 plate appearance sample size. Uh, probably once I have a roster set for an iron tournament, will it, auto it, it will try, but if you accidentally sell a card, um, that was on your team, then it'll mess the whole thing up. And, um, when you're in a tournament, uh, if you have a team in a tournament, let's say you're in an iron tournament, this is a tip that I learned, um, in the past, let's say you're in an iron tournament and you have a bunch of iron cards you want to sell, do it from the tournament and set it to your duplicates. Cause if you're selling duplicates from your main team, uh, as opposed to in the tournament, you may accidentally sell players off of that tournament team and then you can't put them back in. I don't know if that was fixed for this year. That was an issue last year. And I do not know if it got fixed for this year. Uh, Arias is just an on base monster uh 373 on base percentage all time 311 batting average all time is 50 points almost better than league average uh 343 weighted on base average um not a lot of power but a good base runner i would happily bat him number one or number two in my order even though his speed's a little bit low uh he's a runner who is pretty good on the bases also i know this looks bad uh, but as far as ratings go, he doesn't look terrible defensively at second base. He's right in there a little bit better than some of the other guys we've seen on this list with a 65 range. Uh, the 55 error is concerning to me for sure. Uh, but at second base, uh, you can kind of live with uh, a little bit lower defense than you can at shortstop, I think, in Arias. Um, and these are normalized numbers, guys. This is 45,000 plate appearances. For Louis Arias is a pretty solid looking bronze card. I don't know if he'll be bronze for too much longer. So um, get him in your lineups while you can. Uh, you've already made that mistake. Apologies. Uh, you sold Molina while in the middle of like three tournaments. Yep. <laughs> uh, I do it occasionally too. You shouldn't be playing him at shortstop on your main team. He's your move to second list. Yeah, I like Arias at second. Don't like him at short. Uh, number one. Nah. -uh. Uh, Enrique Hernandez, not off to a good start for the Red Sox. Could be iron before too long, based off of what I'm seeing in real life. This is a versus lefty splits, guys. Uh, just had a really solid week. All-time he ranks 12th, though, uh, in weighted on base average, which is interesting to me. Uh, 24 home runs per 600 plate appearances was number one among second basemen in weighted on base average. I don't think he sticks there, but... What an absolutely stellar super utility card. Uh, you can throw him in there and then platoon wherever else you want. Um, it's it's a really, really spectacular super utility card. Uh, the splits are for real. You got six points versus lefties. You got 15 points of gap. You got 12 points of power. Um, so try to keep him in there. Uh, he's kind of a 
um, an active manager's dream because uh, you can put him in for anybody who's who's tired uh, anytime the other team has a left-handed pitcher coming up. So uh, is Polanco viable at second base? I'm not sure. Uh, he has awful numbers for you, even as a versus lefties platoon. Uh, I can see that happening. Uh, he drops all the way to 10th and... Um, weighted on base average over his larger sample size. And so keep in mind, this is over a 900 plate appearance sample size. So I don't love him as a number one at second base. I do think he's an interesting looking um, super utility guy. Probably want to get somebody else at shortstop and center field. And then you can find a platoon at catcher or first base. Um, But uh, I don't hate him. Uh, Let's see. Number 11 is Solano at number 11. Who are we getting? Polanco. Uh, Are we talking about uh, Gregory Polanco? Did we see him? I can't remember if we saw him on the list. Uh, or Jorge Polanco. I think Polanco is viable. If, the, if this is the Polanco you were talking about, sports fan, uh, I think that this Polanco is um, certainly viable at second base. He's one of the better defensive cards that we saw on the list today and providing pretty okay offense out of that too. Um, we're looking for Fletcher maybe? Colton Wong at 12. Nick Madrigal at number 13. Uh, Madrigal not making it in the top. Yeah, I was a little surprised about that too. I love this Nick Madrigal card. This is not the Future Legends card, which, um, by the way, I got in a pack, which is probably my favorite card I've picked so far. That is an absolute monster of a gold card. Uh, versus lefties, he's just really, really good here. Uh, versus righties, he loses a little bit, but still pretty good. Uh, can play second base or shortstop here uh 63 range 62 turn double play 80 error um is you know you live with the 46 arm i think he's much more viable as a second baseman than as a shortstop we'll see if he shows up on the shortstop list but i definitely think that he is more viable here as a second baseman he's going to get on base and he can run too so the the high batting average plus the ability to run makes this madrigal card um a pretty solid card at second base in fact i think we're going to write him down I don't know if he's in there already. He might already be my second baseman. But I'm going to write him down as the second baseman that I want. Uh, I have Stallings at catcher right now, and I think I'm going to stick with him. Uh, Who else are we looking for? He plays back up at five positions. Yeah. Uh, If Luchadella shows up, he'd be more third base than second base. Yeah, we'll see. You're surprised Fletcher isn't in the top 10. Yeah, me too. Um, So here he is. um, Hit the top 10 and weighted on base average at 319, 320 all time. Uh, You got a little bit of power there. Pretty good avoid case. Solid batting average and on base percentage, though. 284, 335, which I think um, one of my goals over the next month or so is to work um, the rest of the rate stats kind of back into the the thing uh here i know that so i switched to like i said probably what 30 minutes ago or so i switched to weighted on base average from what i was doing before because it cal it used everything that i really that i wanted it to use um but i think that it's still a little bit simplified for my for my liking for a list like this i think i really want to try to work um batting average and on base percentage and slugging and ops maybe ops more than slugging percentage so like something like batting average plus OPS or something like that back in. But um, that's a project for me over the next few weeks. You have Arias and Madrigal as your second baseman. Fletcher would have been better if defense was worth a cent. Uh, yeah, if, yeah, Fletcher for sure is a is a pretty solid defensive second baseman too. So 71 range, 80 at second base, 85 error. So he'll probably be in the top 10 the next time we come back around to bronze. Uh, just based on the off that defense alone. Plus he plays third base and shortstop. Um, if you're not wanting to go with like uh eight position utility guy, like Enrique Hernandez, uh, then I think Fletcher is your next best thing. You're, he can play um, competently at all three infield positions. And I am pretty sure I'm using him as my utility uh, infielder right now. If not as my starting second baseman, I'm really not sure. Uh, it's, I haven't looked at the team. Denny Hawking comes in at 15 uh soho is your how does madrigal (laughs) um i I don't know uh you use hernandez at third base would be nice to see speed when you mouse over a player like contact power eye defense i agree um so yeah so you're talking about when you go like like this well maybe so when you're when well that was a pitcher so that didn't help anybody in any way shape or form but yeah i totally i'd really like to see um i was kind of hoping they'd switch from from I to avoid K's this year. I like avoid K's uh, on there, but it, I can see why the, the the thumbnail would get super um, cluttered. Uh, 1971, Rich McKinney at 16. We got Kurt Wilkerson at 17. Louis Guillaume at number 18, but a, I'm really surprised to see him 
this bad in zone rating, even though he gets he's he's get, I think he's getting hurt a little bit at shortstop, but he looks like he should be a pretty good defensive second baseman, Guillaume. Uh, Gene Baker at 19. We got Adam Frazier at 20, Profar at 21, and Gene Segura rounds it out at number 22. Uh, I think I like the Madrigal at second base. And then as a backup. Um, and then I like Fletcher. So I'm going to put Fletcher in as our utility. Two, six, one, six, three, Fletcher. Utility. And I don't know. Do we like Madrigal versus both? Or do we like, let's see, Polanco, a little bit of splits versus lefties. Madrigal splits versus lefties, so they're kind of redundant. I think Polanco may be a little bit better defensively. Uh, Urias at six, Tito, Ramon Urias. Uh, like maybe Arias versus so Madrigal versus left if we can fit him, but Arias as our number one. I think I'm going to go Arias um, as our starter versus righties um, for my second baseman. Uh, yeah, I like Madrigal and Arias. It is tough to fit Madrigal. Um, if we can fit both of them, yeah, that looks that looks like a pretty good combination. I think Arias is our primary, uh, and Madrigal will be our uh, secondary. I forgot I had coffee here. It's cold now. Oh, well. Uh, third base, first base, second base, third base. I don't know what happened. I can't see my things anymore over here. I need to move them up in here uh, at some point. Third base, number 10. Scott Cooper, uh, 1994 at Boston Red Sox, all-star Scott Cooper. Pretty big splits versus right-handed pitching here. Uh, I'm surprised to see him in the top 10. 404 plate appearance sample size that he played well at. All-time does not look as good as he does here. Out of 57, he ranks 49th all-time. Uh, defensively, he looks kind of okay at third base. Almost top 10 out of 57 quali qualifiers. So he looks okay defensively, but that bat... Um, I just think there's too many good bats at third base. When he gets on base, he doesn't know which direction to go. Yeah. Um, yeah, he's um, eight base running. That's kind of, does he run to third base out of the batter's box? Uh, I don't, I don't know. Uh, number nine is, there's Arias again uh, here at third base. I like him better at second base, but I don't think he's unplayable at third base. I know it's an ugly 37 third base rating, but the range, uh, well, with a 51 arm, never mind. I changed my mind. I don't like Arias at third base. I much prefer him at second base. So we're going to move on and then we'll come back to number 11 and 12 because we've already decided that our 10 and nine guys at third base probably don't belong in the top 10. Number eight is Alec Bohm. <laughs> I hate third base. Number seven is Jack Dunn. Um, this is actually my third baseman right now, and I've had some pretty good luck with him, but um, a lot of it is his base running, so he's a pretty good base runner. On base percentage is a little bit low at 325, which is below league average. 266 batting average is right around league average. The slugging is right around league average um, over this thing, so I think it's probably time for me to think about moving on from Jack Dunn. We pulled him in a pack. Um, I liked his ratings, put him in the lineup. He's okay defensively, not great. Um, but again, third base is one of those positions where I'm really looking for a little bit more offense. Uh, he does steal bases. I didn't have a lot of stolen bases in my lineup. And so he worked out there, but I think we're probably going to move on from Jack Dunn at third base today. Uh, for the purposes of this right now, he's a 324 weighted on base average all time. Uh, he's still ranking fifth, but with a 326 weighted on base average and that 45 net steals per 600, which is actually not first among third basemen all time. So um, lots of steals for him. I think he's an interesting, though not necessarily usable option as a utility guy. And um, I wouldn't be surprised if all 1,800 of these plate appearances are from my team at this point for Jack Dunn. Number six, 2021 live, Jaimer Candelario. Uh, fit Arias. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> yeah, wherever you can get Arias in the lineup, he probably needs to be in there. Jimer Candelario comes in at number six. Uh, 345 weighted on base average for him. Almost 30 home runs per 600 plate appearances. Over a 1,200 plate appearance sample size in this particular period. So over like the last six days or so. Uh, 5,100 plate appearances all time. You're seeing a 344 weighted on base average, which is 20 points above league average. Sixth among 57 qualifying third basemen. 
Uh, home runs are 24.88 all time, which is seventh. So had a pretty good week this week. The batting average is a little bit low, just a 252. Uh, on base percentage is kind of in the middle, but he's going to get some extra base hits for you, and he's going to hit for some power for you too, all while playing mediocre defense at third base. Uh, what more could you ask for out of a live 2021 Jimer Candelario card? You've got Segura at third base. You're using Arias at third because nobody else impresses you. Uh, I'm not surprised you're having really good luck in silver tournaments right now, Gravestock. It's, um, it is, uh, there's not a ton of people who have filtered up there yet. Um, like I'm not ready for silver yet. I'm throwing the team at it just to get data, but none of my teams are even close to ready for silver tournaments yet. Uh, you miss catcher in first base. Can somebody speed you up, please? I'm not going to go back through the catchers in the first baseman right now, but if you hit me up on discord, I can show you the list. Uh, Sammy Hale comes in at number five. Uh, playing okay defense, 46 range, 62 arm, 35 double play, 55 error, 42 third base. Uh, numbers have him at fifth. I don't know how true that is. That's a pretty small sample size at just 1,700 plate appearances. Probably about 1,200 innings worth of defense at third base. But weighted on base average, you're seeing a 340 to 345 or so. Uh, high teens and home runs. I had a pretty solid home run week this week uh, with 23 uh, again, lower batting average, lower on base percentage, 10th and average, 21st and on base percentage for him. Um, it is a top 10 batting average among third basemen, so that's not bad. All time, he's top 10 in batting average among third basemen, too. So, interesting looking card here. 69, no splits really, one point of split in every category, so he can play against lefties and righties. Interesting looking card. I don't love the defense at third base. But again, it's a position you can kind of get away with, and he's got a little bit of base running. Maybe as a number five hitter, solid slugging, solid OPS over seven. I'm going to pencil him in third base. We'll see if we like anybody better. 2-1-1-8-8. Hale at third base. We'll pencil him in. Uh, number four is Swede Reisberg. 1918 Chicago White Sox snapshot. Um... 61 range, 52 arm, 80 turn double play, 56 error. Plays a little bit of second base. He's listed as a shortstop. Uh, just a 49 rating at third base, which is still a little bit higher than Hale, I think. Yeah, it's higher than Hale. Uh, offensively, lower average and on-base percentage, but solid slugging. Sixth in home runs. Uh, number one in slugging, number seven in weighted on-base average this week. But what was way up from his all-time. His all-time numbers don't look nearly that good. He's 37th out of 57 all time with a 318 weighted on base average and just 13 home runs per 600. Um, and that's in a 3,400 plate appearance sample size. So this is probably more in line with what you can expect. Uh, positive defense at third base. I can see that. Um, he's got the best ratings of any of the other guys we've seen offensively on the list. So, or uh, defensively on the list. So, uh, and adds a little bit of base running as well. 16 steals per 600. So he's a dynamic card. You got a 75 Brad Keller might replace a bronze starting pitcher. Congratulations. Um, use him as a designated sack bunter. Yeah, perhaps uh, for you're talking about uh, Sammy Hill, perhaps <laughs> number three is Ryan Mountcastle, the number one, most used third baseman uh, offensively. He's number two and weighted on base average top 10 in home runs number four in average number nine in on base percentage second in slugging OPS weighted on base average. I like him more as a first baseman. Uh, I think his defense plays up a little bit at first base. Uh, I think that he definitely splits towards lefties just a little bit. And so I don't necessarily love him at first base either, uh, but he's putting up really solid numbers. And all time, you're seeing a 349 over 18,000 plate appearances, a 349 weighted on base average with 20 plus home runs and an almost 300 batting average. Uh, it's a solid card. It's a solid. Um, I could see him at third. You know, how much do I hate him at third base? Uh, I don't hate him at third base. I think that there's not a ton of defense here at third base at this level that can hit. And I want a guy who can hit at third base. And I can see Mountcastle being a solid option at third base uh, against left-handed pitching. I still think I lean Harry and Nips, uh, Nipsey at um, first base. Um, but Mountcastle at third is interesting. 349 on the net. You got him at 349 too. That's some solid numbers at third base over a pretty big sample size for Mountcastle. Um, but can you live with a 27 third base rating? Maybe. I mean, maybe. That's up to you. Uh, number two, 2016 All-Star Eduardo Nunez. 
Uh, did Lions make my list? I don't know if Lions... Uh, for today. I don't know if he qualified. We'll check. I don't know who's at number one yet, so we'll see. Uh, I know he doesn't have that crazy center field rating that he did last year, so you're doing Bohm at third and Mount Castle at first. We'll see where Bohm fell uh, here at third base. Another 349 weighted on base average for Nunez over this period, but ranks 15th all time with a 324 over 3,000 plate appearances. He does run 90 speed, 88 steel, 95 base rating, base running, a very good base runner, uh, just a 37 rating at third base. He's listed as a shortstop. I don't love him at shortstop. Um, little bit of a weird split. So contact, power, and avoid Ks, both split versus lefties. Gap splits versus righties by about 11 points. So um, Nunez has an interesting batting profile uh, there. Over this period, out of 27, he ranked third in average, fourth in on-base percentage, seventh in slugging, third in OPS, and third in weighted on-base average. But all time, that was 20 points higher than uh, 20 to 30 points higher than all five of those categories and 50 points higher uh, in OPS than his all time uh, over a 450 plate appearance sample size. So I don't don't love this card. Uh, I don't think it's uh, long term going to provide um, enough offensive value to be played here at third base. Um, you're doing Bowman at third and Mount Castle at first. Yeah, I don't I don't like Mount Castle. Let's see what who's number one. Uh, Art Sherine. Art Shireen. I'm going to go with Shireen for this one. 1932 one hit wonder. Um, well, I'm going to pencil Art Shireen in at number one. Uh, two, four, eight, five, eight. 63 range, 77 arm, 50 error, 63rd base rating. Best defensive third baseman I've seen on the top 10 here. Uh, splits a little bit versus lefties. Not totally. So 12 points of, no, holy math. Uh, eight points of contact versus right-handed pitching, 14 points of gap versus lefties, three points of eye versus lefties, and 20 points, 19, of avoid Ks versus righties. Um, yeah, um, please don't go buy this off of the auction house because I want to find it. <laughs> I already missed out on it. In fact, stop. Everybody, close your eyes. I don't know if I have this card. I don't think I, I'm pretty sure I don't have this card yet. Auction house. None available. Did you guys just all go buy him? <laughs> uh, Art Shireen is my new goal in life uh, at third base. I'm going to see if I can track one of those down. Uh, this is an impressive looking card to me. Uh, 369 weighted on base average over 470 plate appearances here over 2,800. You're seeing a 329, which puts them 26th out of 57 qualifiers, but that defense looks pretty good too. I'm not going to lie. I think, um, over time these stabilize a little bit, a 360 on base percentage is 30 points above league average. The slugging is a little bit low. He's not going to hit home runs. You're going to have to have him at number one or number two, maybe number nine in your lineup, depending on what kind of lineup construction you're going for. I do like a guy who can run at the bottom of my lineup, um, but I like this card. This is a good-looking card. Uh, just two home runs per 600 all-time, but uh, 290 batting average all-time. It was a really solid 470 plate appearance sample size uh, over this period, but... I like the looks of this card. Uh, who was number two was um, Eduardo Nunez. None of us liked him at third base. Um, hey, please give Art. <laughs> George Case is a monster. Just posted a four stolen base game in rookie. Uh, yeah, George Case is a good looking card. Uh, 11 was Aussie Vitt. Well, that's not a bad looking card either. All time 327 weighted on base average, 262 batting average, but a 369 on base percentage. I wish the contact was a little bit higher. Uh, that 49 contact against righties is going to make it a little bit tough. That batting average being suppressed pretty badly. Ranked 16th all-time Aussie Vitt. Uh, number 12 was Joe Birmingham, 1911 center fielder. We're going to skip him for now. Number 13 was Polanco. Um, shouldn't He won't be on the third base list next time because that's going to get fixed sometime this week. Miguel Andujar comes in at number 14. Uh, this is a guy who's cleaning up in bronze cap tournaments right now. Thank you. Uh, second and slugging fifth and slugging among third baseman defensively just doesn't stack up at third base. Can't really play left field, maybe as a designated hitter, but, uh, 21 home runs 
with a 305 on base percentage. I don't love that as a designated hitter either. Uh, and the defense, the 81 arms, okay. Um, 49 contact and 92 avoid Ks is so weird. He can't, so he can't hit the ball, but he can't not. So <laughs> let's talk about that real quick because this I did some research on this um, recently, trying to figure out why Nico Horner wasn't hitting for me anymore with the OHBL Cubs. Um, and again, we talk a little bit about engines. The engine for perfect team is a little bit different, but contact uh, will determine batting average on balls in play. So avoid Ks is going to be them putting it in play, but contact affects batting average on balls in play. It's not necessarily their ability to put the ball in play. It's their ability to get the ball that they put in play to land on the field somewhere. So keep that in mind when you're when you're comparing contact and avoid Ks. So um you have case not as impressive as you hoped he'd be, and somebody got him. Pockets got him from starter packs. Uh, Listella at fifteen, Relaford at sixteen, Solak. Let's see, have we seen everybody else? We haven't seen Austin Riley yet, um, and I don't think we've seen Lenny Harris yet. Didakis, there's David Fletcher. We talked about him already. Pinky May. This is an interesting looking card too. Three twenty two weighted on base average all time. Seventh and on base percentage. Um, I'm really surprised to see these numbers this low for Pinky May. And let's see. Number 22 is Lenny Harris. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. Lenny Harris, sixth most used, comes in at number 22. 311 weighted on base average. Number seven in batting average, though. All-time ranks 14th. 307 batting average all-time is pretty solid. 352 on base percentage all-time is pretty solid. With some pretty good steal ability with some defense. That's not a bad-looking card to me. Um, the numbers look okay uh, i mean still top half you're still talking top half here uh as far as weighted on base average and once we parse some guys out i think you're gonna see that move up probably even higher um i i like this card let's see if there's any of him available before you guys do it <laughs> nope no lenny harris available everybody bought him already sad uh i'm gonna pencil him in too as a guy i want to look at at Third base, Lenny Harris. Okay. Uh, let's see, what's that? 22 or 27. We got Rich McKinney, Eddie Foster. Uh, I'm just going to kind of breeze through these guys. That card doesn't... Well, he's a second baseman. That card doesn't look awful. Rich McKinney. Uh, one hit wonder, dropping a 318 weighted on base average, but a 330 all-time puts him at 28 out of 57. Uh, and looks... The arm isn't great at third base, so... Uh, and the range isn't good at second base, so I don't love it. Uh, maybe as a right fielder. Uh, Eddie Foster at 24. Solid-looking card. Good speed. Bad defense. 25. There's Austin Riley, uh, your fourth most used, probably mostly because he's available and hits a lot of home runs. Uh, 25th in weighted on base average, though. 27th in batting average. 27th in on base percentage. Um, so this is a card that's in... Ron's cap right now is hitting really well because he gets into that bullpen and the iron cards can't get him out. The, the iron cards struggle against him with their uh, lower stuff, lower movement um, that you see down in iron. And so Austin Riley, this is a card that's kind of a beast in bronze cap right now, but I think the better bronze pitchers are really affecting its ability to be an effective offensive card here in bronze all time though. He ranks number 19 all time so you're seeing a this was a pretty big drop off down to 306 weighted on base average uh 20 points below um both batting average and on base percentage so all time he doesn't look nearly as bad as he did this week and almost 30 home runs per 600 he's one of the very few pure power hitters here in bronze especially on the infield uh you've been starting lenny harris small sample size 994 ops in a small sample size is um not bad uh <laughs> And Buddy Blair comes in at 26th. Looks okay versus lefties. And number 27 is Gene Segura at third base. Number 27 looks good defensively at third base. Uh, offensively had a really, really bad week. Uh, 898 plate appearances as people started moving away from him to other players. Um, this is so. This is probably about a third of the total overall sample size that I got. So you can see that people started moving away from Segura at third base pretty quickly as he got almost 4,000 plate appearances in the early going, and then in the last 600 or so uh, tournaments has gotten just 900. So 
275 versus a 322 all time. So big drop off too for him as it looks like the the pitching is probably starting to catch up a little bit to um, the more mediocre hitters here in bronze. Uh, you need to move away from him at third base, team. Is that because people are starting to filter out? Yeah, I think that's what it is. Is um, I think the better pitchers are starting to show up, so the actual mediocre hitters aren't cleaning up anymore, and they're turning into actual mediocre hitters as opposed to decent or better hitters. Segura's so defense looks good at third base. I think he's one of the better defensive third basemen we've seen. Um, if he was going to be closer to this, I'd say he's usable. But if this is what he's going to be going forward, then I think we're probably in for a rough go of it with Gene Segura going forward. Uh, let's do short stops, and then I'm going to take a break to go start a new pot of coffee because the old one is gone, and to get a drink of water. Short stops. So short stop was a test bed for me um, with defense, and I didn't actually end up putting it in here. So um keep an eye out i need to check something real quick let me go to um short stops that's uh options and then we're going to go to advanced and we're going to show formula bar here and so i so I took short stops and I did what I said I was doing for catchers, right? I actually did it for short stops today too, just as a, as kind of a, a test. And so when you're looking at the total value, so defense is not calculated in this week's value. Um, but when you look at the total value, uh, defense will be calculated in there. So as we're going through this list, you'll be able to see kind of what we're looking at with the, with the ratings based defensive value for short stops. Why did I start with it at the most important position on the field for myself? Um, because I figured if you're going to break something, break it big, right? So Larvel Blanks comes in at number 10 uh, with a 324 weighted on base average this week. However, all time he ranks number 39th. Uh, and that is, again, with defense factored in, he's just not looking great defensively. Uh, 324 weighted on base average this week. A 282 batting average all time has him top 10 out of 47 qualifying shortstops. How weird is this, guys? 47 qualifying shortstops. Uh, I'm used to like four. <laughs> uh, you have Tavares at shortstop. You're using Adamas. Uh, thanks, Sharpie. I appreciate it. I do a lot of work in these spreadsheets. They're a mess. Um, it is. It Sometimes it takes me some time, and I want to redo them again now that I've learned a lot more over the last two months, but I promised myself that I would stop, and then I got more projects going on, and so I haven't stopped. But Larrell Blanks comes in at number 10 this week, number 39 all-time. Uh, hit some home runs this week. Solid at batting average at 296, a 324 weighted on base average. All-time dropping a 282 batting average, which is 15 points above league average, but doesn't play very good defense at shortstop. Uh, and doesn't play very good defense at second base either. Uh, yeah, I prioritize defense at shortstop too. Uh, it's nice not to see Ozzie Smith on here. I'm not making any promises. I haven't looked at the full list yet. <laughs> Number nine is Desi Relliford. Uh, 72 range, 63 arm, 60 turn double play, 50 error, 64 speed, 82 steal, 98 base running. He's 12th in weighted on base average this week out of 24. Fifth in steals defensively. Um, 72 range, 51 shortstop rating, 63 arm, 60 turn double play. Uh, mediocre defense at shortstop right now for Desi Relliford. Uh, All-time ranks number 33, uh, 34th in weighted on base average, but I think that um, I want to do something. I don't want to do something. I don't want to do it. Um, I'm not going to do it. It'll be here next week. Defense will be over here next week, uh, but not for this week because uh, I'm curious where he ranks defensively. I don't have it. I don't have it at my fingertips just yet. Uh, but a 345 on base percentage, 330 all time is top 20 among shortstops and uh, ranks 33rd all time. Number eight, Alcides Escobar. This is a 2012 snapshot from the Kansas City Royals. 64 range, 81 turn double play, 55 arm, 51 shortstop rating. Eighth and weighted on base average, but number one among shortstops in batting average with a 318. All time, a 324 batting average. Good gracious. That's a pretty solid number uh, from Escobar in batting average. Seventh and on-base percentage all-time out of 47. This is a solid offensive shortstop with mediocre defense, uh, which is what we're getting in bronze this, this year. Uh, let me get a sip of water real quick. 
Uh, s definitely splits versus lefties. He got six points of contact. Uh, you got 15 points of avoid K. He is going to be a batting average machine versus left-handed pitching. That combination of contact and avoid K. Um, the 63 avoid K with 72 contact versus righties isn't going to be as good. Can you fit a platoon at shortstop and play his defense? Is his defense okay? Uh, the 27 versus 34 uh, I. It should be two. It should be a two I. Yeah. Uh, 51 shortstop. Relaford looks sweet. Let's go back. So, yeah, I, I like the looks of this Relaford as a utility guy, too. Uh, he's a pretty interesting looking card. Number seven. Uh, Escobar again. He's gonna he's gonna be a really solid on base hitter with good speed and base stealing against left handed pitching. Tim Anderson, uh, 2016. Tim Anderson comes in at number seven. Again, 324 weighted on base average for him. Number five in batting average among shortstops. Ranks 15th all time though. Again, drops a little bit because of the defense. Um, number one in slugging percentage among shortstops at 438, which is, what's that, 30 points above league average. So uh, a little bit of power going on here. Good doubles, uh, some gap power uh, with just a little bit of home run power as well. The eye is pretty bad for Tim Anderson. Again, this is another card that I think you probably have to platoon versus lefties. I think that avoid K's plus contact combination is just a little bit too low uh, against right-handed pitching. Defensively, not good at shortstop. Uh, I it's this is a hard card for me to even fit in there because he doesn't play any other positions and he looks okay offensively, uh, but I feel like his defense is just lagging behind just a little bit. And I know there's not a ton, there's not an Aussie Smith here, uh, but I feel like the 43 error plus the 42 shortstop rating plus a pretty mediocre range uh, just is not good to me at shortstop for Tim Anderson um, at shortstop. Number six, Andy Stankiewicz. Here's a guy with a 58 contact, 71 avoid K, 75 gap power versus right-handed pitching, and looking pretty okay defensively compared to some of the other cards we've seen on the list. 75 range, 67 arms, 62 double play, and 63 infield error. With a 60 shortstop rating, this is a pretty solid-looking card to me uh, right off the bat. Uh, grading out at 317 weighted on base average all time. He's your highest used uh, historical shortstop right now uh, at number seven all time, number six over the course of this past week. Uh, second and on base percentage this week, 286 batting average this week, has him sixth and 326 weighted on base average all time. You're looking at 24th or so among shortstops, 12th and on base percentage though, and um, solid, if not spectacular, defense at shortstop. Interesting. I'm going to write that down just because. Two, let's, oh no, my pen is dying. Come back, pen. Two, four, two, seven, seven. Eight. No, I have not covered center fielders yet. No, Max Fire. They'll be after my break here in a minute. Uh, he always makes you double take. Brewers just traded RC to the Braves for uh, Vigil and Sabaka. Whoa. They traded Sabaka, huh? Uh, who was at number eight? Was uh, Alcides Escobar. At number eight. Number five, Jorge Polanco. I like him better as a second baseman. We're going to move on from him here. Um, I think most people are probably using him as a second baseman. He just doesn't automatically get switched to a second baseman for purposes of tracking. And so he ends up here with 7,000 shortstop plate appearances. I'm going to guess half of those are probably as a second baseman as opposed to a shortstop. I like Polanco as a second baseman. Uh, number four is Louis Urias. Again, um, I don't think he's unplayable as a shortstop. I prefer him a little bit as a second baseman. But offensively, he matches up a little bit better against the other shortstops uh, with a 330 weighted on base average this week. 317 all-time, ranks 22nd all-time. Uh, and a little bit of power out of the shortstop position for Louis Urias at number four. At number three, Charlie Dexter. Uh, don't know if I love him defensively, maybe as a interesting, if not weird, um, backup. I'll see it as Escobar. Uh, yeah, it's cool. Uh, fast and ruin. You have who at second? Um, Blanco. Uh, yeah, and this one plays catcher too. Charlie Dexter with a 45 catcher rating, uh, 50 shortstop, 43 center field, 48 right field. Do you need the weirdest utility player ever? Um, 
perhaps. Uh, he plays some center field and some right field as well. Uh, solid I and avoid Ks. The 42 contact's going to hurt everything just a little bit. Some good power, second among shortstops in power with right around 20 home runs, but everything else is kind of not great. The, well, the base running is kind of awesome, but the on-base percentage is kind of not great. Uh, just below league average all time, though. Interesting, a 349 on base percentage all time. So a rough 700 plate appearance patch ranks number two all time among shortstops. I don't know. I, I, I'm not sold. We're going to see what he looks like. We're going to see if he pops up in center field or right field and see what happens there. Number two, Swede Reisberg. We saw him a little bit at second base. I do like him better as a second baseman, uh, but he can play all four infield positions. Um, and dropping a 340 weighted on base average, a 318 all time, 324 on base percentage. I know the batting average and on base percentage are a little bit low. Well, everything's a little bit low, uh, but he can run. So we, he's got that going for him. He does grade 24th all time among shortstops. And here is the card I found today. Um, here we go. Are you guys ready? Number one shortstop, Jose Vizcaino. 343 weighted on base average over this period of 340 all time is number one among shortstops. A 76 range, 68 arms, 61 double play, 83 errors, 66 shortstop rating among shortstops. Let me show you what I got here. Let me show you what I got here. Puts him. Where you at? What's his name? <laughs> I already forgot. Where is he at? Jose Vizcaino puts him at eighth uh, defensively among shortstops. So he's a top 10 defensive shortstop with a really good bat. Uh, and th again, these are ratings. Our number one rated shortstop is Galvis. Um, so defensively, we'll go back through uh, a solid bat, 340 weighted on base average, number two with a 310 batting average, number three with a 357 on base percentage, and solid defense at shortstop. Uh, I found him this, I spent an hour and a half hitting refresh this morning on the auction house going, I want Jose Vizcaino. I want Jose Vizcaino. Uh, um, and he finally popped up and I paid not as much as I expected for him. So I am very happy to get him in the lineup, especially since tonight's the Tuesday bronze. Um, love this card. This is, this is, if I was going to say there's a card here that you're going to see today that I think probably needs to be in your lineup, this is probably it. Um, I'm, I'm really, really spectacularly excited to be able to play this card. Uh, so let's talk about him a little bit. Pretty solid range again. So what I did for that shortstop defensive ranking was I went range times something. I think it was times two shortstop rating times one and a half arm times 1.25, um, turn double plays times 1.25 errors times, you know, whatever. And then divided by like 50 or something to get, I wanted to get something between like zero and 12. Um, and so he came in eighth, uh, defensively there were, he would, there were only like eight who got a score above 10. Uh, and he was one of them. And so, um, 69 contact, 63 gap, 36, I yuck, uh, 62 avoid K's versus right-handed pitching. He's a ground ball hitter, uh, sprays his ground balls, normal fly ball hitter, 72 contact, 51 gap. Uh, so you gain three points of contact. You lose a little bit of gap, but the I and avoid K's are very, very similar, uh, for him and um, versus lefties. He's a switch hitter who plays good defense, who hits um, pretty well so far based off of what we're seeing. Uh, second all-time among shortstops with a 310 batting average, a 357 on base percentage, a 412 slugging percentage, puts him fifth among shortstops. His OPS and weighted on base average both first among shortstops. Yes, these numbers don't necessarily stack up, but these numbers are pretty awesome. Uh, doesn't run too much, but he's not a negative base runner either. Uh, middle of the pack in strikeouts and walks all time. There's 47 all time qualifiers. Number one in war all time. This is kind of my card. Does auction house have an already in collection filter? Uh, I wish, uh, it would be really nice, but yeah, it just, it shows up red. Uh, can I check out Frank Tavares? Let's see what we can find on him. Uh, so that's Vizcaino. 11 is Nick Madrigal, but we like him at second base better than shortstop. Number 12 is David Fletcher. Number 13 was Louis Soho, 1995 snapshot Louis Soto, Soho, uh, who ranks fifth all-time, actually. Solid, okay defense. 
Uh, there's Rick Burleson, who was one of the top five defensive shortstops as well. You just pulled a diamond, Carlos Biagra. Congratulations. Uh, whose last 10 is over 40. Outstanding. Uh, Burleson comes in at 14. We're getting asked about Gerber and Adamas and who is the other one? Uh, and Frank Tavares. So those are the ones we're looking for. We got 24. We'll see if any of them qualify. There's Adamas comes in at number 15. Uh, solid looking defense ranks top 10 all time. Largely thanks to his defense because his weighted on base average is pretty low and he doesn't steal. So it looks like he's a pretty highly rated defensive card. Uh, we'll go check him out in a minute. We'll check the defensive shortstops here specifically too. So um, once we get through these, there's JP Crawford at number 16. Uh, another guy who's pretty solid defensively that gets helped out a lot by that defense. And again, this is the only position that I factored it in here for the overall rank. So keep that in mind. Uh, Kaz Matsui shows up at number 17. He's a 69 this year instead of a 64. Um, not as good defensively at shortstop as he was at second base last year for sure. Uh, but he does rank number eight all time. Number seven all time and weighted on base average at 331 over a 3,000 plate appearance sample size for Kaz Matsui. Number 18 is Louis Guillaume. Um, not surprised to see him there. Number nine all time. He's a little bit higher. Um, his bat is not great. Uh, everything's just slightly, there's nothing that really makes any one thing he does offensively good. There's nothing that makes it really bad, uh, besides the power, but there's nothing that makes it good either. Uh, 19 is Neil Ball. 20 is Wally Gerber. So here's Wally Gerber, who's actually 12th all time, even though he is 14th all time and weighted on base average. This week it was a 308 weighted on base average for him. Solid on base percentage though, with a 338, uh, kind of empty with the lack of steals though. Uh, yeah, come on in. I have not. One second, guys. Sorry, guys. Uh, Wally Gerber comes in at 20. Um, oh, I scrolled. I missed some stuff. Then chat help you. You won't drops twice in a row, but doesn't show up. It takes a couple minutes uh, for you, uh, Sharpie, sometimes. If it doesn't work, then um, hit me up on Discord, and I'll see what I can do. Uh, and let's see. We got four left. Uh, Frank Tavares comes in at 21. Uh, 29th all time which is a little surprising, but that weighted on base average is pretty poor. A 285 weighted on base average, a 256 batting average, a 307 on base percentage, which that on base percentage is, well, yeah, it's way low. So not a very good bat right now looking like for Frank Tavares. He comes in at number 21 overall. Even his defense can't help him out all time as it's, he's at 29 uh, all time out of 47. Uh, 23, two is Glenn Crawford. Andre Jimenez comes in at 23 and 24 is Freddie Galvis comes in at 24 offensively uh still ranks 40th all time for Freddie Galvis interesting I'm a little surprised about that very surprised about that in fact let's go over to shortstops and I want to check out the shortstops so here they are uh defensively number one is Freddy Galvis is rated number one. Now, keep in mind, it's a little bit of a work in progress, so I may need to change the ratings around just a little bit. Louis Gorm comes in at number two. Number three is Tavares at number three. Number four is Andre Jimenez at number four. Number five is a tie between Brandon and JP Crawford. Um, fitting. Number, so that's five and six. Number seven is Santiago Espinal. Number eight is the aforementioned Jose Vizcaino. Number nine is not here on the page. Does not exist. Or I'm blind. Uh, is Willie Adamas at number nine? And number 10 is uh, Larry Brown at number 10. So those are your top 10 defensive shortstops. Somebody just sold uh, third baseman Shireen for 2K. He's going for, I'm sorry, guys. My bad. Shireen's going for 2K now. Uh, Good-looking third baseman. Uh, lots of Vizcaino sales. Well, at least I know. Yeah, I should not have done the stream today. My bad, guys. <laughs> Sorry. 
Uh, I'm going to take a quick break, uh, just a couple of minutes, and go um, fill my coffee and eat some food, and I'll be back in just a minute. Thanks for hanging out with me today, guys. I'll see you in just a minute. All right, guys, we are back. Uh, this Kaino is going for... <laughs> Oops. Uh, my bad, guys. I did not mean to break out of the park um, or the auction house. So uh, congratulations to anybody who got them low. I paid three fifty dollars for them this morning. So I'm pretty glad I bought them before I came on stream today. Um, so, yeah, there we go. <laughs> my bad, guys. Uh, he's a good looking card. I don't know if I'd pay 15,000 for him. I can build a bronze tourney team for a cool 95,000. Yeah, my bad. Uh, apologies, uh, to everybody who was trying to build a bronze team before today. I should have waited a couple weeks, huh? Uh, Spike Shannon comes in at number 10 in left field. He is an 80 I 57 avoid case 68 contact versus righty 61 68 53. He is 18th in weighted on base average, but seventh in net steals per 600. I is he coming in at number 10. Craziness. 
Uh, not very good defense in left field. Doesn't look great. Uh, <laughs> I wish I would have bought like six of them. <laughs> and uh, Schwarber OP. Everyone always trying to take advantage. Yeah. Uh, 259 batting average doesn't look good, but the on base percentage of 379 looks okay. Slugging. We had 37 qualifying left fielders, which is ridiculous. Um, he is the ninth most used, 10th most used. A little bit of speed for him. 31 steals is still just seventh, but a 335 weighted on base average, 842 plate appearances overall. Something is not correct between that and this, uh, but we'll figure that out. This number looks correct. Something's missing here. Weird. Okay, number nine is George Jackson. Uh, 487 plate appearances for him, 336 weighted on base average, but 30 steals. Uh, these guys, there's some steals going on in left field right now. George Jackson's a 69. I don't know that I love it. I don't like that on base percentage being as low as it is. I don't like the batting average. Uh, I don't, the 30 on base percentage, the 251 average, uh, are both really low. The slugging percentage looks good. So a 27 home runs per 600 with okay left field defense george jackson doesn't look too bad to me uh with good speed to go along with it i just that batting average and on base percentage are really low uh and i'm not a huge fan of both of those but he's a 50 contact 45 avoid k's which is what's keeping that down but 71 power versus righties 54 i versus versus righties a little bit of a split versus lefties for george jackson uh over there too uh and so, yeah, there you go. George Jackson at number nine. Number eight in left field is Tracy Jones. He's a splits versus lefties guy. You're going to want to platoon him if you can. It's 11 points, nine points of contact, 11 points of gap, five points of power, six points of eye, and 10 points of avoid case. But good speed for Tracy Jones. Lots of speed here in left field. It's not something that we've seen in a whole lot of different um, positions, but Tracy Jones also hits, so at 342, weighted on base average, 351 all time, almost 30 steals per 600, a 300 batting average for, Tra for Tracy Jones with 46 range, 54 error, and a 50 left field rating for Tracy Jones. Uh, 20th all time in on base percentage at 347, uh, 455 slugging all time, and an 802 OPS all time. Tracy Jones at number eight. Uh, I like Jones. Uh, I think. I'm going to pencil Jones in in left field. 4383. Three. Jones. Uh, until we see somebody I like better. Uh, number seven is Dan Gladden. Uh, so, not the same Dan Gladden that we saw last year, but this one's playing pretty well. Uh, number two in weighted on base average. And this is one of those cards that's cleaning up in. Um, bronze cap right now too and that daily bronze cap so uh he had a he had a pretty spectacular couple of days in bronze cap uh very good versus lefties 68 contact 75 avoid k's with 59 power 58 i uh is dan gladden uh solid ratings but again probably platoonable you got 12 points of contact you got 12 points of power 12 points of i and 15 points of avoid k's are going to hurt you pretty bad versus right-handed pitching so uh if you can fit a platoon in left field gladden might be able to be your left side or you know tracy jones might be able to be your left side uh both of them have pretty big splits versus left-handed pitching though uh number six is george case plays a little bit of left field a little bit of right field he's come up in chat a couple times a day he's the second most used uh left fielder uh there are a lot of strong versus left-handed left fielders jones just looks like a worse fielder versus left uh odor got traded to the yankees interested uh i like it that we get news uh while we're running through the chat here that always uh it's always enjoyable uh to keep up with the with the baseball news of the day george case interesting looking card the contact and avoid k's look really good number one in batting average number three all time um among left fielders the weighted on base average is a little bit lower but uh because of that batting average and the ability to run i think that that makes him a little bit more effective uh, i think this card looks pretty interesting 53 range uh 52 left field rating 31 arm 40 error in left field as well so uh case is an interesting looking left fielder to me with 
It splits a little bit versus right-handers. I think that maybe I'm going to pencil case in too. So versus lefties versus righties, if we can make a platoon there between maybe a case and a Jones or um, so Bob Besher comes in at number five. We're starting to see some of those historical cards pop up here in left field. Finally on base percentage is third, uh, second in steals among left fielders, but 25th in weighted on base average It's a very walk heavy on base percentage, but he's a absolute beast on the base paths. A 376 on base percentage is almost 50 points above league average. And it's right in line with his all time too. So he just missed the all time here. Uh, in left field 47 range is okay not great but you can live with it in left field if you're getting really solid offense and he's a interesting option for the top of the order you're going to want to bat him first or ninth probably i don't think he's a very useful number two hitter uh i don't think he's um very useful really anywhere except first or ninth in the lineup just because of the fact that those walks are really 130 points of on base percentage is just nuts uh from a walk standpoint also splits versus righties uh, I still lean towards Case based off of what I'm seeing so far over Besher. You platoon Case and Jones in left field and Case plays right versus the other hand. Interesting. You put Case in your lineup last night. Good splits. Vizcaino, no, buy it now. Up to 1,251 in four minutes. Maybe I should sell mine and um, buy packs with it. Lee McGee comes in at number four uh, among left fielders. I'm really sorry, guys. I didn't mean to price you guys out of bronze. <laughs> By the number two guy. Uh, Lee McGee comes in at number four. Solid defensive left fielder. Solid looking numbers. Solid looking ratings for Lee McGee uh, here in left field. 58 contact, 57 gap, 58 power, 57 eye, 80 avoid Ks. It's one or two points a split. Uh, split slightly versus lefties, but really it's just one or two points. This is a good looking card here. Um, 55 left field rating. I'm going to pencil him in too. For Lee McGee. But I'm probably going to, uh, with good base running, this is a pretty filthy looking card. But all time, he's ranking 31st in weighted on base average among left fielders with a 336. Uh, that's out of 62 uh, players. So 11th in weighted on base average this time. The numbers don't match up with what I'm seeing here. Uh, 267, but they're all right in line with each other. So it's probably about what you can expect is a 269 average. 341 on base percentage. I definitely like the other two guys more uh, than what we're seeing out of McGee. I think their ability to get on base is a little bit more helpful uh, since they can run. But McGee's uh, okay. Um, Got to do silver purchases before. Yeah, I need to. Um, yeah, I'll need to make sure I do that. <laughs> Alan Wiggins comes in at number three. He's number one in stolen bases with 72 this week. Number one all time with 68 steals per 600 plate appearances, which is crazy. Uh, 289 batting average, 370 on base percentage. Not very good defense, but plays some first base, some left field, some right field. We'll ignore center field because uh, that's not a guy I want patrolling center field for me, even once every four days. Uh, 64 contact, 56 gap, 68 eyes, 78 avoid Ks. A little bit of a split, especially the 13 points of eye versus right-handed pitching. Wiggins doesn't look too awful either. Um... Uh, versus righties either. Uh, number two, Davy Jones comes in at number two, 62 range, 69 left field, 56 error, 70 contact, 75 I, 69 avoid Ks. I'm going to guess we got a pretty good batting average. Fourth in average, almost 300. Number one in on-base percentage this period, almost a 400 on-base percentage, 395. Uh, All-time, it's a 373, which is still... Pretty good, but he ranks about 14th all time. His weighted on base average is 47th, but the steals move him up. Again, 62 guys. So a 325 weighted on base average. The 340 is 8th over this period, but the 325 is a little bit lower than, than what he had this period. And so we're looking at uh, another guy. Lots of really solid... Um, options here in left field against both lefties and righties. Jones definitely splits versus righties. I can see a Jones... Um, on the list twice or was it a different jones tracy jones we got a davy jones and a tracy jones here um and maybe do a jones and jones the other jones splits versus lefties with case splitting versus righties this is an interesting card versus lefties to me solid on base percentage with speed 
Uh, and defense. Let's see if we can find any of them. <laughs> uh, for D. Jones. At number two. Number one is Joe Gallagher. Uh, comes in at number one. Number one in weighted on base average with a 374. This is a 360 plate appearance sample size. So it is a small small sample size, but a 507 slugging percentage, an 860 OPS, a 300 batting average, 352 on base percentage, and almost 30 home runs per 600 for Joe Gallagher. All time, it doesn't look that good. 334 weighted on base average with uh, 445 slugging and just a 270 batting average. It looks like it was just a really solid week for uh, Gallagher. Let's see where, let's see. We know, we want to find Schwarber uh, for sure. Peralta comes in at number 11. Uh, Gladden, let's see. Jones, Jones, Platoon. I like it. Uh, McGee is solid at DH. And uh, we're looking for Merton. Somebody else was looking for somebody else too, I think. Oh, that's it. So we're looking for Merton and Schwarber. So uh, Henry Cotto comes in at number 12. Another guy that looks like an okay contact guy with some speed, but just 32nd in on-base percentage. So not great there. Mike Toshman, live Mike Toshman, um, is a pretty solid live card. Uh, I really like the live cards this year. They're all, um, they're at least competitive uh, this season. Number 14 is Merton. So there's your 2006 Matt Merton rookie sensation, your eighth most used this period. Uh, 274 average, but a 360 on base percentage was fourth in weighted on base average, uh, seventh in OPS. What is going on with my left field? It's, there's got to be so many guys that are stealing bases with a bunch of guys clustered in here uh, that he loses some because of that steals, those steals uh, in left field. Uh, 344 weighted on base average is pretty good, right in line with his all-time too. So 17th all-time. Um, I'm curious what would happen if I took steals out. He, well, I mean, he'd move up to fourth if I took stolen bases out of left field. So um, if you're looking for a guy who's going to get on base for you by um, – Whatever means necessary. He's looking like a good on-base percentage guy. Not as much speed. Not as much stealing. Uh, Toshman is a good backup. I agree. Uh, number one was uh, Joe Gallagher was number one. Uh, Gross at 15. Corey Dickerson at 16. There's your Kyle Schwarber at number 17, who is number one in home runs. Almost 40 home runs per plate or per 600 plate appearances. That would be a lot of home runs for one plate appearance. It's a lot for 600 plate appearances. Uh, 340 weighted on base average, 771 OPS, 446 slugging percentage for Schwarber. Uh, the batting average is atrocious. And the on-base percentage ends up right around league average anyway because he can walk. Uh, he will strike out. He's 33rd out of 37, 54th out of 62 all-time in strikeouts, right around 160. But he's going to put up 40 home runs per 600 plate appearances for you, uh, he, especially against right-handed pitching. Uh, interesting designated hitter option. Uh, Merton Platoon. Where are you going? Who is number one? Definition of noodle arm. We got Joe Gallagher. He was talking of Davy Jones and then nothing. Okay, I uh, gotcha. Uh, and... You're going to run Gladden Jones from what you see. Why so many people running Schwarbs Dingers are actually. Um, so he's probably going as a designated hitter. Uh, it's a lot of home runs and there's not. He's, there's probably three or four cards that hit home runs the way Schwarber does. If that many. He might have the most in the entire uh, bronze. And um, he's readily available. So he's a, he's a live card. We've seen how quickly. Well, now we've seen how quickly we can make those. Bronze cards go up in price. Um, but uh, Schwarber looks to be uh, a pretty good power hitter, and he's live. So um, I think that if Case was, if Case or Jones or uh, McGee or any of those guys were as available as the Kyle Schwarbers are, they'd probably take over, they'll probably take over the number one spot in short order as far as use as well. Because Schwarber does one thing, he does it really well, he does it better than anybody. Um, Maybe in all of bronze, it's going to be really close. I don't think we've seen anybody with more than 36 um, so far, but um, he does his one thing really, really well. Center fielders? If only the Cubs could have seen these numbers, right? <laughs> uh, he was really good as your DH in, snow, in stone last week. I'm not surprised. This is He's a guy who, um, lower level pitching, um, this is a, I think he'd be really interesting if you can fit him in the bronze daily cap. 
Um, but I don't, I think there's no DHs in the daily cap, if I'm not mistaken. So uh, he's going to hurt you in left field. But I feel like this is the kind of card that would feast on daily cap bullpens. Uh, Kyle Schwarber. Center fielders, number 10, Felipe Alou. 68 range, 47 center field rating. I haven't run the defensive numbers at all. We have a tie at 8 and 9 um, for center fielders all time. Might be a Lou. He might be one of those two. I'm not sure. Uh, 72 contact, 68 gap, 86 avoid Ks. Number four among center fielders and batting average. Defensively, I think we can probably do better, and it's a pretty important position. I wonder where he'd fit in in left field. Uh, let's see. 333 weighted on base average, 283. Um, let's see. So he'd be... 292, so he'd be somewhere around 10th, 333 in, in, in average. We're looking, we're talking somewhere around 20th. So yeah, he doesn't he doesn't match up offensively um, with the left fielders, but defensively, I think he's got some deficiencies in center field. Maybe first base. Uh I don't know that he matches up offensively with the first baseman either, though, uh, to be honest. Um and so he comes in at number 10 in center field. We had 33, quali so many outfielders, 33 qualifiers, 68 all-time qualifiers. I can't wait to knock those thousand, those first thousand tournaments off the list. Uh, number nine is AJ Pollock. He's your third most used. Uh, I'm not surprised that people are using Kiermaier. Uh, Pollock has some left field ratings. He's getting used in center field too, the third most used. I think that is probably people using him in left field and not adjusting. Uh, almost 30 home runs. Well, right around 30 home runs per 600 for him. On base percentage of 315, though, for A.J. Pollock. The combination of low I plus low avoid Ks is um, a little bit of a mess for A.J. Pollock, but he's going to hit some home runs for you. But that's about it. 343 weighted on base average has him sixth all-time among center fielders. Again, if defense was taken into account, though, he would probably fall down the list. We're going to check the guys out that didn't make the top 10 uh, when we're done here. Brett Gardner comes in at number eight. Another powerful... Hitter here in center field with a little bit of ability to run. Fifth and weighted on base average. Sixth in steals. Fifth in on base percentage. But all time, he ranks 31st. Uh, so right around the middle of the pack. And it looks like it was a pretty solid week for him this week. But 10 points above his weighted on base average. A solid 10 points above his batting average. In a 636 plate appearance sample size. I think people are moving away from Gardner. Again, this is a bat that doesn't quite match up offensively with those left fielders, but it's not somebody that I'd play in center field. So uh, not a big fan of Brett Gardner here. Uh, Lewis Kiermaier is the center field move. Talking about Kyle Lewis. Uh, I can see it. Uh, you use Pollock in a platoon home runs. You use Dubon. Sports fan uses Dubon. Uh, Kiermaier is your center fielder. Alou is going to be better as time goes. He's got a nice reverse split as well. You bet he does way better when pitching out a bit. We'll see. Um, how does he, yeah, Alou was around 10th. So, um, Brett Gardner would probably be around top 15, maybe in left field. Maybe not even that his bats just not up there, but I think Alou's probably a pretty solid, um, top 10, top 15 left fielder for Alou. Number seven is Delahanty. Uh, here's one that I can see playing in center field. He's the 10th most used, uh, all time for fifth in slugging seventh in OPS seventh and weighted on base average of 50 center field rating, but a 71 range. Is a little bit more than the other guys we've seen, 63, 58, 68. Um, so you're getting up into a guy that's a little bit rangy that provides a little bit of defense with a little bit of power in center field. I don't hate Delahanty. Uh, not really any splits to speak of, just two to three points in basically every category for him uh, and a little bit of speed. Well-rounded card, not going to win any gold gloves in center field, but um, may or may not kill you out there. Only 980 plate appearances this time, though. But they were right in line with his all-time numbers. 331 weighted on base average, 418 slugging. But he ranks 23rd all-time. Dylan Hanty plays backup for you. Uh, yeah, I agree, sports fan. I think there's very few standouts here in bronze. Uh, Charlie Dexter comes in at number six. We saw him at shortstop. I don't love him in center field, but again, as a kind of an interesting utility backup option. Um, he is... 22nd in weighted on base average among center fielders, but those stolen bases help move him up the list just a little bit. I wouldn't be surprised to see him somewhere in the top of the right field list. Um, I try to keep steals from being like a defining factor, but because they're not calculated into weighted on base average, that's why I keep them in there. Um, if we're going to have like five guys that aren't very good, <laughs> at least last year when it was Sedano and Coleman, they provided some value. I don't know that Dexter 
is providing too much value. A 222 batting average, 327 on base percentage, and a 314 weighted on base average just aren't very good. Uh, I really don't like this Charlie Dexter card all that much. Number five is Gabe Gross. Uh, 71 range, 50 center field rating. Um, so probably drops down a little bit when we do the defense. Sixth in home runs, second in weighted on base average among center fielders, though, with a 339, which is about 15 points above league average almost. Um, we saw him. He factored in in left field as well. But again, he's he's a guy that has a little bit of a center field rating. It's, he's one of those guys that's in the middle, just like those live cards we saw, the Pollock, the um the gardener where his bat's just not good enough to play left field but his defense is going to hurt you in center field and ignore the zone rating numbers in center field they're a disaster right now um so uh yeah it's uh it is what it is uh splits versus lefties for i splits versus righties for avoid k splits versus righties for power but versus lefties for gap but versus righties for contact so I mean, he's not necessarily a guy that needs to be platooned. I just don't know if he's an everyday center fielder. Number four is Lou Finney, who is a first baseman with a little bit of a center field rating. Number one among center fielders and weighted on base average at 343. We're definitely going to have to back up and check out these defensive guys. I don't think I play Finney as a center fielder. However, interesting option for a utility player if you're looking for a bat. Solid avoid Ks in contact versus lefties or versus righties, I should say. He's going to have a pretty good batting average right around, uh, you know, mid 280s, I think is where he's probably going to stay. Uh, you could be obviously over a smaller sample. You could see as high as 300, but um, not as good versus lefties. I, I think he needs to be platooned. Um, and so it makes him less likable as a utility guy because it, it's pretty hard to platoon utility guys. Um, and so I don't love this card either. Number three is Mike Toshman, who's your second most used and is a very, very good bat. However, um, I, we saw him a little bit as a left fielder. Um, I think he's a phenomenal choice as a backup utility outfielder. Uh, is Toshman 63 left field rating 46 center field rating with a 71 range you can live with that every few days um, but he's gonna hurt your team over the long haul uh, if he's playing in center field every day and he can play right field too um, solid 338 weighted on base average 763 OPS 415 slugging 347 on base percentage uh, which are right in line with his all-time stuff over 17,000 plate appearances so again you get into that 17, 18,000, this is probably about what you can expect from Mike Toshman going forward. Uh, he just sold for 1,700, had 20 bids. Nice. Uh, using Valar in center field for his speed, but D is shaky. Uh, yeah, we'll see what he looks like. Bill O'Hara with a 71 range and a 50 center field rating. I need to get, God, I need to get those defensive ratings done this week. Uh, number one in steals is Bill O'Hara. Uh, weighted on base average is top 10. Uh, on base percentage is third in se among center fielders. He's rating 30th defensively, but showing a plus 30 zone rating, which is ig ignorable. Um, he looks like he might have been the other one who was tied if um, I'm not out of my mind here. I could be out of my mind. It's something that happens occasionally. Uh, what does he do? So third in on base percentage. I'm a little bit surprised by that, but it's a pretty solid 71i. Uh, versus righties but again you're looking at a guy that doesn't necessarily play center field every day uh, and who has to be platooned uh, so again he's a guy that I don't love as a utility outfielder because it's so hard to platoon them um, and who doesn't necessarily maybe as a right fielder maybe as a left fielder I could see him playing up just a little bit but I don't love him in center field I need defense too much center field uh, yeah he'd be a great pinch runner slash Bunt for a hitter slash sacrifice bunter if you ever need any of that stuff. But um, I don't love him as a utility player. Uh, number one, Lee McGee comes in at number one. 55 left field rating with 58 range, 51 arm, 59 error. Uh, I actually kind of like this card, but he doesn't, again, he doesn't really stack up all that well again among the left fielders because there's other guys who do things just a little bit better than him in left field. But a 29 rating in center field with a 58 range is unplayable to me in center field. I feel like McGee has to be your left fielder or bust. Uh, fourth among center fielders. But again, we're looking at, uh, let's see, 426, 339 uh, versus lefties. You're looking, that's going to be 
433 is 10th. So he drops outside of the top 10 in slugging. And 329, you're looking at outside of the top 25 in weighted on base average in left field. So his bat just doesn't play in left field. And I don't love his defense in center field either uh, for McGee. Again, another one of those guys that maybe, maybe as a platoon, or not as a as a um, utility option in left and center field, pinch runner kind of stuff. Um, let's look at... Let's go backwards. We got Austin Slater at number 11. Let's see if we can't find our defensive guy. Nick Senzel at number 12. Don't love it. Joe Birmingham with a 75 range, 59 center field rating. Looks okay at in center field. Uh, 19th and weighted on base average. Al Gianfrido at 14. Come on, Kiermaier. Where are you at? Franchi Bordagare. Bordag, Bordag, I give up. Uh, at number 15. 73 range, 55 center field rating. 68, 67, Brian Reynolds with a 44, 66. Here's Michael Taylor with an 80 range, 69 center field rating, 97 in left field, and 86 in right field for Michael Taylor with a 318 on base percentage, well below league average there, uh, 20 points below league average in batting average. Some power for Michael Taylor. I don't think he'd be the worst utility outfielder uh, out there. You're going to get him to play good defense for you and hit some home runs every now and then. Um, not going to be on base very often, but he'll trot around the bases every now and then. Jerome Walton. Haha. <laughs> I was going to retire off of my Jerome Walton rated rookie cards. Uh, obviously that didn't happen. Uh, number 20 is Ken Landro, 1979 snapshot from Minnesota. 21 is Denny Hawking. Come on, Kiermaier. There's Oscar Mercado who plays all three positions in the outfield as well with a 309 weighted on base average and 10 or so home runs per 600. Kyle Lewis with an 81 range, 71 center field rating, 69 arms, 71 error, and hits better than Kiermaier. I do. This is one of my favorite cards in iron, and I don't think he's unplayable here in bronze. I think this is a pretty solid defensive option in center field. Uh, yeah, Jerome Walton was fun. Uh, we've been platooning Man, uh, Mangual and Collins. Hard to find a good center fielder. I, yeah, they're... Um, they're definitely a mixed bag down here. Maurice Anderson from 1924 at 25. Rocco Baldelli with a 78 range. 90 arm, 66 center field rating. Looks interesting. Maybe a platoon versus lefties if you can fit him in. He doesn't look bad versus lefties. Uh, there's just so few lefty pitchers here in this format right now. Villar, not great in center field. The bat doesn't look too great either. Um, but can play second base, third base, shortstop, and center field. Here's Kiermaier, definitely the best defensive center fielder that we've seen. 83 range, 87 arms, 66 error, 75 center field rating. Uh, the bat is going to be mediocre, um, but it's center field. I think center field's pretty important um, uh, as far as defense goes. I consider it the second most important position. I know other people disagree with me, and if you're running a heavy fly ball pitching team, then it probably becomes a little bit more important, but... I almost like Lewis's bat better than Kiermaier's defense. Lewis is pretty comparable. Uh, did you miss Mike Fielder? I haven't seen him yet. Let's finish the list. Victor Reyes, uh, interesting-looking defensive platoon. Not a very good bat. Thomas Howard comes in at number 13. Another interesting defensive platoon with a um, not great bat. <laughs> Jerks and Profar, nah. Zip Collins at 32. We got one more. Jason Hayward, live Jason Hayward, comes in at number 33. Uh, and so those are your center fielders. I do think that Kiermaier is probably the best defensively. Uh, Baldelli looks like an interesting defensive card as well, but I don't think there's one that you definitely have to go with. I actually like Kyle Lewis's combination of defense and bat and might switch to him in center field. I don't know who my center fielder is right now. Uh, I would not be surprised to see Lewis be a 60-plus uh, I like this card better than the Kiermaier card. I know the Kiermaier arm is a little bit better, but um, I think this card's pretty comparable to that and might have a better bat. So 327 all-time versus Kiermaier's 30. I think Lewis is definitely a better bat. It's a more well-rounded bat, uh, and the defense is pretty comparable too. So uh, I do like the Kyle Lewis and readily available. Um, I'm going to have to, I don't want to spend too much time on center fielders. I'll dig into them more uh, in my off time and see if there's anybody I like a little bit better. But um, there's very few good offensive plus defensive combinations in center field. And so it's definitely not one where I want to say, hey, let's go with the number one bat and just be done with it, right? Because 
the number one bat is it looks really bad uh, defensively in center field. I don't like Lee McGee in center field. Again, I can live with him in left field probably, but I don't like him in center field at all. So um, I think I'm going to go with Lewis for now in center field. Get his, sorry, let me grab his. Where'd you go, Kyle Lewis? There you are. 26103 center field. 26103 Kyle Lewis. And right field. There's Toshman coming in at number 10. Again, I think we all agree that he's a pretty good utility outfielder. Uh, number two and played appearances as a right fielder. Uh, and 18,000 almost overall. Number nine is Bob Ganley. Uh, 1907 right fielder snapshot. Uh, let's see. Good speed. Another guy that's getting helped out by his speed. Uh, did we see him in left field? I can't remember if we saw him in left field or not. I... Doubt it. That weighted on base average is pretty low. Really low weighted on base average. The defense is okay in right field. Uh, and the batting average on base percentage both leave a little something to be desired. 33 qualifiers, 66 all-time in right field. You guys need to figure out who you want to use. <laughs> 1993, Dave Clark comes in at number eight. Do I will do pitchers, yes. Uh, surprised not to see Shad Berry. Uh, looks like he didn't qual qualify. Ethan Allen did not, I did not see Ethan Allen on there, uh, didn't qualify. Again, if you have um, questions, I, I'm going through the whole list really quickly at the end. And if you don't see your guy, just shoot me a message on Discord and I'll see what I can find for you because uh, the sample size was probably just too small for him to get on. Dave Clark at number eight, pretty bad defensively. Offensively, number four in weighted on base average, number one in on base percentage uh, for Dave Clark. But all time, number seven in on base percentage among right fielders, 11th and weighted on base average all time for Dave Clark, uh, platoon Kiermaier and Lewis. Uh, I, I don't think, I don't think that's a wrong answer necessarily. Uh, number seven in right field is Homer Suma. Interesting. Uh, number one in batting average, number three in on base percentage, number five in slugging three in OPS and three in weighted on base average. Number four in batting average all time, number five in on base percentage all time, number five in weighted on base average all time. Okay, defense, pretty good avoid Ks. Okay, speed. I'm surprised that his base running isn't a little bit higher than this, but that's, I mean, it's a little bit of a low speed. Decent sack bunt, doesn't strike out ever, um, and has a pretty good batting average and on-base percentage. Splits versus righties, uh, enough so that you might want to try a platoon with him in right field. Number six is Norm Miller, 47 range, 56 arm, 47 error for Norm Miller in right field. Uh, 43rd overall, second in war, second in weighted on base average, second in OPS and first in slugging. We're going to see some stolen bases here high on this list, guys. Uh, for Norm Miller, a little bit of a split, weird split. Um, better gap power versus righties, but more power versus lefties. Better eye is comparable. 10 points of avoid K versus righties and two points of contact versus righties. So he's a left-handed hitter, but he hits both lefties and righties pretty well just uh you know more home runs more doubles versus more doubles triples versus righties more home runs versus lefties as you'll probably see out of him and more of a, a much lower batting average versus lefties as well uh for norm miller at number six number five is carlos lopez uh number five in weighted on base average and adds a little bit of speed to go along with it uh number two in batting average at 311 which is pretty solid 306 all time which is still pretty solid that's a good 40 points over league average 340 on base percentage is good for 10 points above league average so not going to walk much uh solid slugging ops weighted on base average all third all time among right fielders okay defense 51 range 44 right field rating it's okay in right field not great uh with a 51 arm not so bad uh that i would call him unplayable we just froze up for a second come on excel catch up to me Nick Castellanos, live Nick Castellanos comes in at number four. Uh, number one in weighted on base average, but dropping a negative four net steals per 600 over the last 374 plate appearances. An 830 OPS, uh, 39 range, 34 right field. This is an unplayable defensive card. Um, maybe playable as a designated hitter versus lefties, but that's about as far as I'll go on Nick Castellanos. I wouldn't play him at third base. I wouldn't play him in right field. Um, I know it's right field, but even there, a 39 range with a 34 right field rating is just 
not good. Uh, and all time, you can see over it was 30 points above his all time. So uh, I don't like Nick, Nick Castellanos at all. Number three is George Case. We saw him in left field. We'll see him here in right field as well. Uh, seventh most used right fielder at the moment. Uh, just under 10 home runs. Fourth in batting average, sixth in on-base percentage, some speed to go along with it, and decent range with a 37 right field rating. Um, I like him better in left field, but uh, his bat probably plays up a little bit here in right field as well. Um, but at the same time, if you're playing somebody like him in left field, he becomes a little bit redundant over here in right field too, so you got to be careful of that. Number two is Doc Cook. 46 range, 35 right field rating, very good on base percentage against righties, 358, 21st in weighted on base average, 82 steals per 600 for Doc Cook, 77 steals per 600 for him all time, 361 on base percentage is 10th among right fielders, but a 330 weighted on base average is 39th. He's a guy that, I don't know guys, I don't, I don't know what to say about this card, I'm going to be honest. Case is your right fielder. Art Shireen up for 11,000. Buy it now. 212. <laughs> You're using Brett Phillips for defense. Uh, you use a Southworth Taylor platoon. Let's see who number one is. I don't like any of these cards all that much so far. Bill O'Hara comes in at number one. Uh, another guy who can run. Uh, was he number one in left field too or, or center field? He was number one somewhere else too. Uh, 13th in weighted on base average. Fourth in on base percentage. Uh, I don't remember where else we saw him. He'll strike out not very much. Uh, won't walk very much either. Number one in war among right fielders, which is interesting. Probably getting some of that from playing center field. Again, decent on-base percentage with some speed. Uh, yeah, that was, right field was a rough list. I don't love right field. Ahara was two in center field. Um, I don't love the right field list. Uh, definitely need to work some on that one. Uh, 11 is Tom Long. Third in batting average, which is nice. A uh, little bit of defense, not much. Twelfth is Mac Jones with a 51 range, 43 right field. Well, here we go. Now we're talking about a card that might be usable. 353 on base percentage, ninth in weighted on base average at 338. Thirteen is Carl Taylor. Plays a little bit of first base, a little bit of left field, a little bit of right field. Seventh in weighted on base average here in right field. Second in on base percentage. There are not a ton of good right fielders out here, are there? Clint Frazier comes in at number 14, 58 range, 57 right field. You know, I like, I kind of like this Clint Frazier card. Good slugging percentage, third in home runs, 25 or so home runs per 600 plate appearances. Not bad. Uh, the lower batting average, lower on base percentage hurts, but it's right field. I want to get a little bit more offense. I want to be careful not to have be too dependent on speed. Let's see if we can find Southworth or or, or Victor Diaz or Armando Rios. Uh, let's see, 15 is Ham Hyatt, a little bit of right field, uh, definite right field splits, seventh and slugging, Ollie Brown comes in at number 16, I'm running him, I think I'm running him in right field right now, but probably need to move on, right field is tough, Victor Diaz, 14th and weighted on base average, 8th and slugging, 20 home runs or so per 600 plate appearances, pretty good speed, and pretty good defense to go along with it, I like this Victor Diaz card so far uh, in right field, Right field two five zero six eight. Uh, the avoid case is a little bit low, but the gap power, power, and the fact that he doesn't really have any splits with a little bit of speed and better defense than most of these other right fielders uh, kind of makes up for it. Here's Slater, the most used, comes in at number eighteen, but I think he's the most used because he's playing a whole bunch of different positions. But three ninety nine slugging is ouch. Uh, 254 average, 333 on base percentage is actually okay. Uh, OPS of 732, right around league average. I mean, you're going to get right around league average from a guy that can play all three outfield positions for you. I think that Toshman is just a little bit better uh, than Slater as a utility outfielder, and I wouldn't play the Slater card as an infielder uh, really at all. Uh, you don't think you have any of the non-lives? Uh, you're trying out Pafko? No, no uh, Toshman was number 10. Uh, Pat McNulty at number 19, uh, all time number 26. These cards are rough. Wadi Lee at number 20. Inter Here's an interesting one. A uh, little bit of left field. Number two in home runs among right fielders, number nine in slugging percentage, but the average and on-base percentage are pretty low in this period. But all time, 
A 331 on base percentage is right at league average. 251 batting average is low, but a 446 slugging is pretty solid. 776 OPS is not terrible. A 341 weighted on base average, not bad with a little bit of right field defense and can play some pitcher defense too. Uh, two way player, Wadi Lee. Uh, 76 power versus righties and some speed to go along with it. So um, interesting. I'm not sold on any of these cards. Santander can play some right field defense. Pretty solid defensive outfielder here for uh, Santander. Uh, 16th and weighted on base average. The speed's a little bit lower, which dropped him down just a little bit. But third in slugging percentage, almost 20 home runs per 600. And uh, on base percentage, that's pretty low. And a batting average, it's pretty low as well. Will pitch even if not asked to. Correct. When is this up as a recording to whiz through? Uh, I, that's up to Rich. Rich is the one who puts them all up. Uh, let's see. We got 12 more, so let's burn through them. Half go at 22. No defense. Yeah, batting average. He's going to have a good batting average and won't be the worst base runner, though he looks pretty bad base running wise. 12. Middle of the pack home runs. Uh, Pat Siri. Some power here. Surprised that his home run numbers aren't a little bit higher. This is more in line with what I'd, I'd expect out of him. Ranks 39th all time, does Siri. 24 is Randy Moore. Who else are love Irv Waldron? You're doing a Dave, a Dade Waldron platoon. Uh, there's more. Jerry Morales looks like a... And some of these cards, I want to be better than the numbers we're getting out of them. Ranks 10th all time. So Morales looks interesting to me. So he had a rough 1,000 plate appearances or so. Here at 20 home runs, 321 weighted on base average, but all time he's dropping a 355 with a 466 slugging and 25 home runs. I think I'm gonna throw his name down too. Morales, Jerry. This one's not too bad. He's a little bit of split, not too bad. 14 points of power, but everything else, and 14 points of avoid K uh, the other way. But everything else is pretty close. Um, I'm a little surprised to see him underperforming so much. But again, all time, he looks a lot better than what we got out of him over the last week or so. So um, again, that, that might be the pitchers catching up and the pitching staffs specifically catching up to guys like him. So we'll see what happens with him going forward. 26 is Ted Ford. 25th and weighted on base average, 5th in home runs. Okay, right field defense for Ted Ford. Uh, nobody really stands out. David Green at number 27. Any numbers on Bud? Duchok? Slugging seems low compared to his profile. For uh, for Moore? Or no, for Morales? I agree. That slugging seems seems pretty low. This this looks more like it uh, to me on Morales. I think I'm going to err towards what we see. Denny Hawking comes in at number 28. You got your bronze cards just in time. You have six packs already. Guys, a third, fourth, and a second. Congratulations, Gorgo. Kyle Lewis comes in at number 29. Brett Phillips at number 30. Good looking defensive card. Um, avoids the strikeouts all time. Seeing a 213 average with a 306 on base percentage uh, and a 360 slugging percentage, none of which are great for Brett Phillips. Uh, Jason Lane looks like he could be an interesting platoon option, uh, but with so many right handed headers. A little bit scary. Eighth all time, 24. Had a really rough 440 plate appearances. But again, I don't think I like Lane too much in this format right now. He's one. This is one that if we end up being at like 50-50, Lane could become a pretty valuable uh, asset to have on your bronze team. But right now with like 70 plus percent of our pitchers being right-handed, I think that Lane is not a great choice. Yoshi Sutsugo. Uh, currently playing first base for the Rays, but 77 power. Goodness gracious. Terrible numbers, though. 392 slugging, 332 on base percentage, 231 average for Sutsugo. Uh, yeah, that is that card is not performing right now, uh, and I don't know if we can expect it to start performing going forward. What does Paven Smith look like? I didn't see him. 33. See, we, I saw him somewhere else. Where did we see Paven Smith? Because he didn't get onto the right field list. I can't remember where we saw him. We saw him at first base. Uh, there he is. A little bit of right field. Uh, let's see. 371 on base percentage. 438. Slugging. 
359 weighted on base average. In right field, a 359 would be somewhere around fifth, you know? I'm not opposed to Pavin Smith in right field. I don't think he looks too bad. Uh, he'd be top 15 or so in slugging percentage. Uh, and see, with a 438 on base percentage of 371 would put him top five in on base percentage as well. So um, I don't I don't hate Pavin Smith in right field. Uh, I did not see Asmani Thomas. Um, I did not see Mac Jones either. So it looks like they didn't qualify. You've been running Pavin in right field. I can see Pavin Smith being an interesting right field option. Uh, and so we'll see if we can fit one of those guys in. So two, five, six, five, three. Pavin Smith. All right, let's move on to pitchers because it is almost two. I am, I got to hustle through these guys. We have... 60 pitchers qualify. Uh, some of your guys aren't going to make this list. I cut it off at 250 innings for... Let me make sure uh, that that's what I did. I might change it. Uh, let's go pitching. Right now, pitching is cut off at uh, 300 all-time and... Two hundred uh, for the current period. So, uh, two hundred innings pitched for the current period was the cutoff for pitchers. Uh, some of your guys are probably not going to be on this list. Some of your guys might. Um, right now, the ten most used are Duder, Don Gross, Satchel Page, Josh Fleming, Rich Hill, Bill Bonham, Madison Baumgartner, Chris Paddock, Matt Strom, Frankie Montas. Uh, this week it was Gross, and then the rest of those guys really <laughs> is what it was. Uh, it, it, it's the same top 10. It's just a slightly different order, uh, I think. Matt Strom came in at 15. Uh, 415 FIP, 393 earned run average for Matt Strom. Uh, solid uh, out of 60, 20th in strikeouts, top 10 in walks, uh, walk suppression. Has a little bit of a home run issue, does Matt Strom. Uh, just over a home run per nine innings puts him 43rd, which is kind of right in the middle. Uh, Irv Waldron seems good. Surprised not to see him. Uh, I, yeah, I didn't see him on any list. Let's see if we can't find him. I don't know if I'm in a tournament right now, or I don't even know what I'm in right now. This is my season, so Waldron. He's not available, so I don't have, let's see if we can find him in the league somewhere. That's not how you spell his name. Yeah, I don't even have, don't even have eyes on Irv Waldron. Uh, what's up, Buke? Welcome to the stream. Good to see you, man. I hope you're doing well. Uh, you can't open page. I got page in a pack. I was very happy about it. Uh, so Strom at 15th. All time, he ranked 6th. So 403 earned run average, 394 uh, FIP. Well, I had those backwards. 403 FIP, 394 earned run average, all time for Strom. And again, top 10 in walk suppression. Number 2 in whip, number 5 this week for Strom. 14 is Brent Suter. Uh, he's not number 1. Uh, a little bit sad. Home runs are a serious issue for Suter now. 1.2 home runs per nine inning. He is number three in walk suppression and number two in whip. So the home runs don't crush him because a lot of them are um, solo home runs. There you go. Uh, words come out difficult. Uh, 407 fit, 403 earned run average for Suter. All time he ranks fourth. Eighth and fifth and eight and earn run average. Both of these guys are in my rotation, and I'm pretty sure that the full tenth of a point drop off and 20.2 drop off for Brent Suter is because of the Thursday, Friday, Saturday that he had for my team. Uh, they were it was a pretty rough performance on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday for the decimals in these tournaments. Uh, I just, yeah, I just started starting pitchers. Can I just run over the top five real quick? Yeah, we're we're just starting them right now. Uh, yeah, Suter at 14, surprising, but he ranks fourth all time, uh, does Brent Suter. 13 this week is Joe Johnson, a card that I haven't seen much of. High movement, very good control, pretty good control. Uh, kind of midpoint in walk suppression, but number two in home run suppression. Uh, 402 FIP, 403 earned run average over this period. 421, 440 all time, ranks number 41 all time. So something happened with Johnson over this 761 plate appearances. Somebody put some better defense behind him. Because uh, he's not going to strike too many guys out. You're going to want really, really solid defense 
out there with Joe Johnson because balls are going to be in play. There's not going to be a ton of home runs, and there's not going to be many strikeouts either. Uh, so if you're not running a solid defense, Johnson's a guy that you're probably not going to want pitching for your team. Number 12 is Jamie Barria. Uh, a little bit surprising here, but with – what are we looking at? Um, Right-hand batters are over 50%. Solid stuff, solid control, uh, pretty solid movement versus right-handed pit batters. For Barria, but number 71 all-time in strikeouts, 42 in strikeouts this time, 23rd and fifth, but ninth in earned run average all-time. He ranks number 38. Uh, does Jamie Barria with a 436, 426 earned run average. Uh, this week it was a 419 FIP and a 3.8 earned run average. So again, looks like somebody's helping him out with his defense. Number one in whip this week too for Jamie Barria. Number 11 is Freddie Peralta. Very good stuff. Number one among starting pitchers with nine and a half strikeouts per nine innings. Number eight in earned run average this week. Number 21 in FIP for him this week. The FIP is lagging behind that earned run average uh, just a little bit. Home runs at 1.07. Walks are a little bit of an issue as well. Uh, and so that's why you're kind of seeing that FIP and earned run average be a little bit of an issue. The home runs, there are more home runs in bronze uh, this year, but they're still not like a huge element of the bronze tournaments. All-time Peralta ranks number 11 with a 373 earned run average and a 406 FIP. Uh, again, uh, I'm going to guess that the entire drop in him this week was mine because he's in my rotation too. Number 10 is Jeff Neiman uh, dropping a 436 FIP, 444 FIP. Number one in earned run average though. Interesting. Uh, the FIP is bad. The earned run average is very good. The knuckle curve getting it done for Jeff Neiman, uh, his fifth pitch. This is not a great looking card to me, but, um, you know, the 61 stuff, 61 movement, 55 control versus righties is pretty solid. Uh, 92% start percentage versus 94 all time. He ranks number 30, which again, that's out of 115 all time qualifiers and it's just 525 innings pitched. So he just barely made the cutoff. Um, Interesting. I don't know what to think about Jeff Neiman right now. I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to hold my thoughts on him. I'm not sure. Not sold. Robert Gesselman comes in at number nine, 65 stuff, 64 movement, 66 control versus righties, 57, 56, 62. Uh sinker, changeup, curveball slider, fifth and FIP, 19th and earned run average, all time. Ranks 29th, 18th and FIP, 61st and earned run average all time. Not Great, but had a pretty solid performance this week. Uh, was top five in home run suppression, was top five in fifth this week. But the earned run average left a little bit to be desired, and he's right in the middle of the pack in strikeouts and walks is Gesselman. Ten to favor, strongly higher movement. I must have blurred vision looking at these. Um, sometimes. <laughs> uh, you find with a lot of lefties is they're good, but every once in a while they just get completely obliterated. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, number eight is Ralph works, uh, right-handed pitcher, 60 stuff, 74 movement, 51 control about the same, a little bit of a split, uh, versus lefties, but, uh, solid stamina, stamina. So you're seeing guys with like 46 stamina, um, uh, pitch pretty well in these tournaments, sub four FIP, sub four earned run average all time. He's 403 and 408 though. Uh, they came down just a little bit. Uh, Ralph works good home run suppression right in line with his all-time numbers not going to strike too many guys out uh, You know right in the middle point and walks 20th all-time uh, number eight this week number seven this week was Victor Gonzalez Very very effective pitcher versus lefties very Mediocre pitcher versus righties who was nine nine was Robert Gesselman uh, good slider, change-up sinker combination for Victor Gonzalez. This week it was a 397 FIP, 383 earned run average, both in the top 10. Uh, 13th in home run suppression, 26th in strikeouts, and 36th in walks. All-time, he ranks number 12, 396 FIP, right in line with this week. 403 all-time, puts him at 17th all-time. Number 6 this week is Quang Hyun Kim with his 66% start percentage. Uh... This isn't a card that I really like all that much, to be honest. Fastball, changeup, slider, curveball, but lower stuff movement control versus righties. Uh, fourth and earn run average this week. Seventh and fifth, ninth all time. Tenth and earn run average and thirteenth and fifth all time. 
A uh, little bit of a home run issue. Middle of the pack in strikeouts. Good control. Um, you know, top 15 or so in control. 16th all time. So top 10% basically all time in walk suppression for Kim as well. Uh, Suter is back to his old dominating tricks. Yeah, he's uh, he came in 14th, I think. He's all right. This is, Buki, you haven't been here for these streams before, have you? Uh, so this is the usage. Uh, this isn't necessarily where they rank. Number five is Michael Lorenzen. Uh, you have the top three up here. Uh, I don't. <laughs> uh, number five is Michael Lorenzen, who's got a good stuff movement control. This is a solid looking card. This is a card that um, is doing pretty well in the bronze caps as well. Walks are going to be an issue for him, um, but the strikeouts and the movement help him to pitch around those. Top 10 in strikeouts, top third in home run suppression at .75, a 389 FIP, a 373 earned run average this week, 23rd and 18th in those all time at 411 and 404, which puts him at. 24th all time. Number four starting pitcher this week is Lee Stong from the Boston Red Sox 1967 team. Pretty heavy splits. Nah, a couple points of splits versus righties. I know it looks egregious, but it's only four, three, four points uh, versus righties. I'm a little surprised at this. Number two in FIP this week at 3.65. 13th in earned run average at 3.99. Top 10 in home run suppression. Fourth in walks. And fourth in whip. Only 300 innings pitched for him, though. Uh, only 1050 all time. He ranks 17th all time. Page, yeah, I, I was I was lucky enough to get Page out of a pack. Lorenzen swings too. Uh, that might be why people use it. Uh, I don't know who three, two, and one are. Uh, let's find out. Number three, Bill Bonham at number three. High stuff. 67 movement, 47 control, no splits to speak of. 71 8 sinker, 98 change, 71 curveball. You like Stang? Uh, I didn't talk about him much. Fastball, slider, curveball. I like the control. The control is pretty awesome. Uh, this is another one of those guys that I really feel like um, out of the that out of the park. Being able to um, do individual strategies on these pitchers that is specifically pitch around and shifts and stuff like that. Um, I think he's a guy that can real that out of the park 22, you can really maximize your value out of once you figure out the strategies. I haven't figured them out yet, so don't ask me. If somebody knows, let me know. Uh, Page Gross Bonham, 123.3, by far the best start, the three best starters in bronze. Uh, yeah, we'll see who number two and one are, but Bonham is pretty good. 379 FIP, 375 run run average, all time is number three, 370, 368. Top five in strikeouts, top 20 in home run suppression. Uh, walks are an issue for him, but he's going to strike everybody out and uh, not give up any home runs too. So um, he's pretty solid at number three. Number two, Satchel Page. Number two, 370 FIP, 364 earned run average. He is number one all time at a 366 FIP and a 360 earned run average. And again, the drop off here is probably entirely my Satchel Page. 19th in strikeout, 7th in home runs, top half in walks per nine innings. Satchel Page is a phenomenal card, phenomenal pitcher here in bronze. And number one, Don Gross comes in at number one. Hey, the first list we've done today that matches pretty closely. <laughs> Gross is number one in FIP this week, 370 all-time. Number seven in ERA this week, 375, matches his all-time, ranks number two all-time. 30th in whip, but... Uh, top third in strikeouts, top 10 in home run suppression, uh, top half or so in walks. Gross, Page, and Bonham look to be pretty solid here in bronze. Otherwise, does low stamina affect pitchers? It depends. Uh, if you leave them in too long, it will definitely do that. But in bronze, um, you have a lot of relief pitchers who are pretty comparable to the starting pitchers. Still, even still, uh, uh, I different nine. And so you can get into your bullpen pretty early. And... Um, and you can um, use your bullpen, your your bullpen pretty effectively too. So you bench Bonham today because he was just walking too many for me. I can see Bonham and his control being a little bit of an issue because it's going to prevent him from getting through that fifth inning and getting into your middle relief. You're going to have to use your long relief a little bit more because the walks are going to make his pitch count run up just a little bit fast. But you definitely want to have your hook, your sliders to get these guys out of the game a little bit early, but they're going to give you 30 stamina. will give you a good effective five innings. Um, pretty consistently. Uh, I found here in bronze relief pitchers. Are we ready? Uh Oh, what happened there? 
That looks better. Uh, number 15 is Michael Givens, live Michael Givens, 407 FIP, top 10 in earned run average at 3.14. All-time, though, 38 qualifiers, 104 all-time in relief pitchers. All-time, he ranks number 31 with a 395 FIP and a 336 earned run average. Number 14 is Josh Spores. I'm sure I butchered that. You got a high stuff, good movement, good control. Uh, decent stuff across the board for spores. 82 fastball, 86 slider, 60 curve. Uh, they're usually good for 90 pitches or so. Yeah, agreed. Um, shh, Gorgo, no spoilers. Uh, anyone else using Fred Anderson? I haven't seen Fred Anderson. Yeah, if they if they had good stamina, they'd be silver for sure. Uh, Epic Divinity. Anyone else? Yeah, relief pitchers where historicals will flex. On, yeah, I agree. We'll see what the list looks like, but um number 13 is john bale very high movement very good control lower stuff only five strikeouts per nine innings is almost last but top five in home run suppression 14th in walks per nine ranks 13th this time ranks 13th all time uh i'm gonna be 100 percent honest with you never heard of him uh 2008 kansas city royal snapshot no idea I have no idea who this guy is. I would have to do research to even know what he does. Extreme ground baller. He's a ground ball pitcher. Uh, 0.23 home runs per nine innings all time is kind of ridiculous, though, for John Bale. But the whip of 1.5 is pretty spectacularly bad as a relief pitcher as well. So uh, put some good defense behind him. I, I'm, You know, if you're going to pitch him in the seventh, eighth, ninth innings or something, uh, and you can get defensive subs. If you, not that there's a ton of defense here in bronze, uh, but if you can get good defensive subs in there, I think he can be really effective. Not going to let up too many home runs. There's going to be a lot of balls in play for John Bale. Number 12 is Jake McGee. Uh, borderline specialist, seven points of stuff versus lefties, five points of movement, four points of control. So he's a borderline left-handed specialist. You can use him against righties, though. I think he's still effective against righties. Uh, 14th in FIP, 16th in earn run average, but 5th in whip this week. Top 10 in both strikeouts and walks allowed. Uh, another guy that has a little bit of an issue with home runs. 35th out of 38 relief pitchers on this list in home runs. 88th out of 104 all time. So he's not going to be your stopper. Don't let him come in with runners on base, but if you give him a cleaning, clean inning, he's probably going to be pretty effective for you. Uh, you're hoping Yardley is somewhere. We'll see. Tony Pena comes in at number 11. Uh, lower stuff, good movement, good control. Another one of those guys that's going to have a lot of balls in play. Uh, 386 FIP, 325 earned run average. All time ranks number 24, though. 36th in FIP, 32nd in earned run average. 99th in strikeouts per nine. Uh, 33rd this week with 5.22. Pretty good home run suppression and pretty good walk suppression as well. Top 10. Uh, in both of those categories this week. Lower stuff, just the three pitches, fastball, slider, change, uh, with a 93 hold runners for Tony Pena. Number 10 is Steve Wilson, 1989 rookie sensation. This is your um, your high stuff, good movement, good control, kind of decent numbers across the board with three pretty okay pitches. This week he was 18th and fifth, ninth and earned run average, sixth in strikeouts per nine. Um, you know, middle of the pack in home runs and walks, for him, which is kind of what you expect after looking at these ratings. Uh, it's fun when the numbers match up, right? Uh, all time, he's sixth in earned run average among relief pitchers with a 3.15 and a 3.77 fit puts him 24th, uh, leaving him around 14th all time out of 104. Number nine is your number three strikeout pitcher uh, on this week's list. 9.46 strikeouts per nine innings. Uh, John Gross is up to 4K. My bad, guys. Um, yeah, if you got dupes, you should have. I should have waited to sell my duplicates. <laughs> uh, nine point four strikeouts per nine innings for Romano. Thirty uh, first in home runs, though. Nineteenth in walks. Eleventh in FIP. Fourteenth in earn run average at three point two seven. Romano comes in at number nine. Number eight is Brett Martin. Solid ratings across the board for him. Seventy ish stuff. Mid 60s movement, mid 60s control, very consistent pitcher. Um, not gonna light the world on fire. Ranks 37th all time, but this week it was a 312 earned run average and a 35 FIP for Brett Martin. Sinker, curveball, slider, changeup. Number seven, Fernando Salas. Salas. Sometimes I can't talk. Uh, another guy who's a borderline specialist. It's 11 points of stuff and four points of movement against righties. 
Definitely still can be effective versus lefties, but will be more effective versus righties. Number seven this week in FIP, 12th in earned run average with a 3.23 and a 3.64 uh, between those two. Top 10 in strikeouts this week, middle of the pack in home runs and walks, puts him at number seven. All time ranks number 10 with a 3.69 FIP and a 3.25 earned run average. A bit optimistic. Stream. <laughs> Only the shortstop had an actual run. Yeah. Uh, I'm happy that you have all the good bronze cards. Race pace. I wish I did. Jarlin Garcia comes in at number six. A little surprised to see him this high on the list. It was just 330 innings pitched, though, over this period, which he doesn't even show up. He just misses the cutoff uh, for all time by about 30 innings. Uh, fifth this week in FIP, sixth this week in earn run average, 357, 305 between the two of them, top 10 in home run suppression. All time, though, pretty mediocre. Ranking number 17 all time is Jarlin Garcia with a 380 FIP and a 329 earn run average and uh, 0.67 home runs per nine innings, which hurts quite a bit. At number five, Brian Brazier, your fifth most, most, most used relief pitcher. Um, another guy that's very, he's a specialist. I think Brazier is probably limited to specialist, uh, against right-handed batters. Uh, but when you got 55, almost 60%, uh, right-handed pitching, uh, then Brazier becomes effective. 80 stuff versus 66, 63 movement versus, uh, 52 and 71 control versus 66. This week it was a 361, 295 FIP and earn run average all time. It's at 377, 341, ranking him 15th. Really solid week for him this week, though. Fourth in whip, uh, and then inside the top 20, top 15, and all three of your counting stats as well for Brazier. Number four, Carlos Estevez comes in at number four. 2021 live, 91 stuff, 54 movement, 59 control. You lose 12 points of stuff, seven points of movement, and how many right handed? specialists can you have on your staff i think brazier's the way to go estevez just had a really good week it was a good half point better than his all-time fip and a good half point better than his all-time earned run average he was the number one earned run average in 214 innings this week but all time he ranks number 35 so um probably need to stay away from carlos estevez i think it was fourth or so uh, Suter was 14th and third on the night. Yeah. Uh, Suter was lower than I expected. But again, all time, he ranks fourth. So uh, it was just a little bit of a rough week for Suter. Uh, Roger Mason, all time, I say. It's been, what, a week and a half? <laughs> uh, Roger Mason comes in at number three. Uh, eight points of stuff here. You got four points of movement, one point of control. Not quite a specialist, but he drops uh, number three, FIP, number two earned run average this week uh, at 3.36, 292. Number one in whip this week as well. Uh, and number one in walk suppression also for Roger Mason this week, similar to his card last year, I think. Uh, all time, he ranks number five, 361 FIP, 325 earned run average, fourth in whip all time at 1.221. Not going to strike too many guys out. He will let up a home run here and there, but there's not going to be anybody on base when he does it. So he comes in at number three. Uh, number two. Jim Britton comes in at number two. Very high movement. Your number one home run suppression pitcher here in bronze. Uh, 0.14. 7.19 strikeouts per nine. 28th in walks per nine. Number one in fit. Number four in earned run average. All time number two in home run suppression, believe it or not, at 0.21. Uh, 70th in strikeouts, though. Seventh in earned run average. Third in fit. Ranks number seven all time. And your number one relief pitcher for this week is... Yeah. No spoilers. Wayne Twitchell comes in at number one. He is your number three home run suppressor this week. Number two in FIP, number five in earn run average, top 10 in whip, uh, almost top 10 in strikeouts. All time, he ranks second in earn run average and FIP. Who is number one? Seven, five, 35, 15, 17, 10, 37, 40, 4, 19, 13. Where's our number one all time pitcher? Did he not get. On the list today, there's number six. Number six all time is Patterson. 29.51. Goodness gracious. Now we're getting into guys who didn't even qualify. Let's check. Let's go check. Pitching stats. And go over here. And who? 
Wayne sure uh number one all time he didn't make why he must not have gotten enough innings pitched to qualify so Wayne sure with a 230 earned run average all time 6.57 strikeouts two walks per nine 0.39 home runs per nine 4.08 war per 200 for sure, which is just a crazy number for a relief pitcher. He's your number one all time, uh, but didn't have enough innings to qualify for this week. So who knows? He just is filthy in real life. Yeah, McGee has been pretty good. Uh, Mason, last night you got him. That's uh, all right. Have a good one. Uh, and. I don't know. So we obviously have, for starting pitchers, sorry, I just got really close to the mic, so apologies there. So Gross, Suter. I like Suter, even though he was lower this week. Page, um, Bonham, in some order, right? I like the four of those guys in some order. Uh, Stangy looks interesting. You're definitely going to have to play with his... Um, with his personal sliders i think you're going to have to override his sliders from the rest of your team uh because you're going to want him pitching around quite a bit uh i think uh let's see lorenzen looks pretty good i i like lorenzen uh quite a bit kim at ninth let's see who was so the one two and three were one two and three right one two and three Shooter was number four if i remember correctly Shooter at number four so who's number five all time number five all time was matt's Number six all time was Strom. I like Strom as my number five. He's been pretty consistent for me. Um, yeah, I think I like Strom a little bit more than Matt's uh, overall. Although Matt looks okay, so I'm gonna leave, I'm gonna stick with Strom though. I've been running Strom. I think this is already. I don't know if I have the. Um, I don't think I have the Don Gross yet uh, card for my rotation relief pitching. It's, I mean, it's Twitchell and then fill your bullpen really is what it comes to, is what it comes down to. Where's Paddock at? Um, Paddock was at way down the list. Holy smokes. 27th for Paddock. All time ranks 15th though. So uh, tough week, 421 fit, 435 earn run average this week for Paddock. Uh, and so, uh, this tournament start how long do i have before i have to put this team together am i did i already miss the start of it <laughs> do i have to build my team for next week instead starts later tonight right oh we're still in this one it starts in four hours so i got time to put a team together let's check on the bronze team real quick and then we'll open some packs i'm not going to spend the points on packs today uh, i'm going to try to finish building this team tonight and i also have um, I'm trying to finish the live cards. The decimals looking like they're going to earn some more packs in this one. Uh, wrecking ball guys. I want to talk to you about disappointment. Okay. I want to talk to you about being disappointed in your team. Um, the iron Warriors is my favorite tournament. It's very competitive. Uh, it's a pretty low barrier to entry uh, outside of being able to get into the tournament and being willing to have a team locked up in that tournament for six days. My team was an absolute master of destruction through three rounds. We went 12 and two in the first three rounds. We then went up three to one in round four. We were an inning away from going on to the quarterfinals for the second week in a row. We made the quarterfinals last week. Uh, how do you use the pitch around slider? And then we lost three games in a row. And I was so disappointed. I was like, this team's an absolute beast. We're going to win. It was Amos Strunk this week. I was like, we're going for Amos Strunk this week. And um, then we lost three games in a row to get knocked out. I hate iron. <laughs> uh, so how do you use the pitch around slider? So I use it. And if there's anybody in here who's found something better, Feel free to correct me if I'm wrong. I sold so many cards. This isn't even the real team anymore. Um, so for guys with, so if you go into strategy, right, let's go into player strategy. Um, I'm going to talk about individual players real quick. Let's just talk about um, Sisk. So Sisk is a 61 stuff, 75 movement, 45 control. So what you can expect from Sisk is a moderate amount of strikeouts, not too many home runs, uh, or he's going to induce weak contact. But if he's nibbling, he's going to walk a lot of guys. So for a guy like Tommy Sisk, 
uh, I'm going to set my pitch around to be a little bit lower. Um, not a ton, because he's not a super high stuff, super high movement guy, um, but I want him attacking the zone more than I want him kind of pitching around a guys. Pitching around guys. Guys like Smelzer, on the other hand, who's a 58 stuff, really low movement, um, really high control guy. I'm going to have Smelzer pitching around more frequently. I want him hitting the corners. I want him uh, at the knees. You're up at not throwing pitches down the middle that are going to get absolutely smashed by some of the hitters out here. Um, now in iron, it's not. I think in iron, the players are probably a little bit more important than your strategy. But once you hit bronze, I really think that this strategy is just as, if not more important than your players. You were the winner of the Herzog. Congratulations. How is it? Is that a pretty good looking card? Uh, zero silence. Uh, and so that's the pitch around slider. Guys that are in the middle, I'm still kind of kind of working through these guys. Like the Philip Deal, who's a good stuff. Okay movement, okay control guy. I'm kind of working through those. Yeah, no problem. Uh, extreme. Um, I think we're going to just, let's go to the main team and then we'll open these eight packs and, um, see how it goes. I can't remember if I did this draft or not yet. That's tomorrow. So I'll do that on stream. In the Sold it for 26 K. Uh, the team who wanted it as a theme. Dang. 26 K for that one. Nice. Joe Kelly on the auction house. You're just staring at it. Free to play is hard. Uh, I don't. I, I need to get away from free to play. We got eight packs and then we're going to wrap it up guys. Thank you for hanging out with me today. Um, the main team at 24 and 12, it looks like right now uh, in our current league. Let's hope for a hit. I haven't had a big hit yet. We got a Ryan Harper, Caleb Berrigar, Clarence Jones. Uh oh, gold, Sonny Gray. Are you kidding me? Uh, Jamie Easterly and Mangeris Magnaris Sierra Easterly. 58 stuff, 77 control, 60, or 77 movement, 60 control for Jamie Easterly and Clarence Jones in iron. We're on a big hit today. Uh, you're welcome. Uh, I'm glad to have you guys here. Sign up for, the, yeah, the Sandlot's tonight. It's a gold cap. Uh, it's not a super huge barrier to entry. A couple gold cards and then a bunch of bronze and irons uh, can potentially be competitive in that, uh, in that spore of Sandlot. Kyle Higashoka, Burke Badenhop in this one, Almora Jr., uh, a couple iron cards. Your team looks like a whale because you sold McCarver. That's what happened to me last week, last year, too. I haven't had that big hit yet this year. I think it's Sugo. We got to see him today. Uh, moderate performer here in bronze. Uh, Nipper, Woodford, Johnard, Ali Sanchez. There's our Ali Sanchez, iron catcher. Uh, pretty good defensive catcher, even up to Braun, the number one number one catcher, all the way up to bronze defensively. We've got an Arietta, Stenzel, Monkhauser, Benatendi for the Royals, Barnes, another decent defensive catcher. Uh, probably top five in bronze defensively as far as catchers. That's a pretty sad live pack right there. Got out of work early. Happy to see. You. Yeah, every Tuesday. I'm here every day. Um. For the most part, we'll get a Joe Marty here. Uh, I stream most days of the week. We'll get a Freddie Parent, Boston 1903 historical snapshot. That'll be one that goes into the Thursday snapshot tournament, I think. Sells for 4000 Ah, mini hit, whatever. Matt Thais, Wes Benjamin, Joe Marty 67. We didn't see this card today, and I can see why, because it just doesn't look very good. Here's Jarlene Garcia. He was in the top 15 today uh, for relief pitchers. This isn't my theme team, Buke. I haven't even touched it yet. I need to start getting on that. Uh, Derek Hill, Nick Whitgren. We got two packs left. Hill is an interesting um, option as far as either utility outfield and iron or a utility outfielder in a cap tournament. Uh, he's a 40 rated card that plays pretty good defense at any outfield position. Uh, he's uh, I, we'll see what happens with him over the season. I don't suspect he'll stay at a 40 for super long. Uh, we'll get a Castellani here. Chargeois, Johan Ramirez, Ender Inciarte. Uh, there's Victor Diaz. Is that one that we were looking at? He's one we were looking at for a right fielder. He's a duplicate. We already have him. Uh, how much do you go for? 76. 
Um, I just changed my mind, and Victor Diaz is the best right fielder in bronze. Let's see if we can do this, right? Uh, he is the best right fielder in bronze. You have to have him on your team. Um, no, I'm kidding. I'm joking. That is not true. <laughs> and our last pack. It's looking like no big hits today, guys. We got a solid Boston Red Sox gold, and we'll take Wilbur Good, right fielder, um, who doesn't, let's be honest, look all that good. So uh, I am going to wrap it up, guys. I'll be here. I'm hoping for 9 o'clock tomorrow morning. I'm going to hit the um, bronze daily app tournament again tomorrow, and I'm going to see if I can't do something for perfect draft in the morning as well. So 9 to about... 11 in the morning tomorrow uh expect to expect to see that stuff and then i'm going to hit some ohbl stuff tomorrow for the for those who are new to my stream i do um i stream for my online leagues and we'll do some play-by-play -play and stuff uh, i'm not the commissioner so we don't get to do real play-by-play -play, but uh we'll talk about tomorrow's my big league it's a 30 team uh online league with 30 real people leading teams and we're starting week three tomorrow i control the cubs in that one and then Thursday, it'll be the Taba where we have opening day for the defending champions, which is my team in the Taba. So he's actually decent in a platoon. Uh, cool. Uh, good to know for Wilbur Good. Yeah, I'm glad you enjoyed it, Charlatan Prime. Uh, hit me up on Discord if you have questions about players that you didn't see today. I'll see what I can find for you. It might not be right away. I have to go handle some, you know, real life stuff first. But uh, I'll try to get back to you. If not tonight, then like early tomorrow morning before I start streaming. Uh, otherwise, everybody, thank you for hanging out with me today. It's always fun. Uh, have a fantastic night, and I will see you tomorrow or next week. Bye, guys.